facility should be ready to fire in just a few more days. We don't have a few more days. B -b but a premature firing will destroy the Ark. Deal with it. We'll destroy this installation. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. Protocol dictates action. I see now that helping you is wrong. Ah, the child of my makers! Inheritor of all they left behind! You are Forerunner! But this ring is mine! Welcome back, guys. So, we are... If you're confused... <laughs> we are getting more gameplay in about 30 minutes. And I could probably just re-upload the video because it's premiering soon on Halo Waypoint. But I just had so much fun yesterday that I thought that maybe it would be more fun to just sit here and, and watch it with you guys. So... Yeah, um, I feel good. I slept like a baby last night because I know everyone has like a different understanding of different perspective of what they saw yesterday, but I feel like Halo is back. And I'm not just saying that like my number one thing with you guys has always been being fully genuine and honest and upfront. Um, I'm not going to pretend to be more hyped to get more views i'm not going to pretend to be you know super negative to pander to people that hate halo but honestly genuinely i feel like halo is on the right track so i feel good after yesterday honestly i feel really good that was that was fun <laughs> that was fun seeing like actually being thrown off a little bit because i was so reserved yesterday also, let me know, can you hear me alright, guys? Is my audio fine? Probably just gonna spend a second checking it real quick. Actually, myself. But let me know if it's good on your side. Seems like it's fine. <sighs> cool. Well, welcome back, guys, if you were here yesterday. If not, it is pretty early. I actually just woke up about 25 minutes ago <laughs> and I was like you know okay I should probably I didn't set an alarm I was like I should probably check to see is that overview coming soon is it going to be at my 11 again or is it going to be at uh is it going to be sooner it looked like it was going to be sooner and thankfully I checked it when I did because I was like oh all right time to put on pants you know, I, I feel, this might just be me, but I feel like I need pants to do a stream, you know. Um, even though I don't have a face cam on, I feel like everyone can tell if I have pants on or not. So that's just me. Uh, do we know if they're planning on monetizing this since it's free? Uh, uh yeah, dude. They, we do. Um, you know, if you guys... <laughs> I got people telling me to take my pants off now. I know, really. I mean, in just celebration of yesterday, I should just wear no pants. I mean, why be be, be civil anymore? I mean, Halo's back, right? And uh, just just let me see actually real quick. Yeah. So here it is. Um, this is what we're waiting for. Uh, my God, 7,000 people are watching the, the main stream. So, but you know, you shouldn't be missing out much. Uh, I'm not going to talk during it. I'm doing this live in 1080p, so it should be pretty much the same experience as the OG source. 
Uh, and also, thankfully, our chat is not being spammed. So that's cool. Hope I didn't just jinx it. But you light theme. Yeah, you know, I used to have dark theme, but it just it looks cleaner, you know? The white theme on YouTube. So why don't you guys let me know what your thoughts were on yesterday's showcase. Because we got Master Chief talking to uh, Cortana 2.0. <laughs> And then we had we had some multiplayer gameplay. The spam yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one benefit of being here is that you're you're not in a it's not overcrowded. Although we actually did get uh, four thousand five hundred. I think we topped out on four thousand five hundred viewers yesterday live. That was uh, shortly before and after the actual reveal. And then. Right now, which is pretty cool, 600 live viewers. So yeah, uh, welcome guys, welcome. Um, maybe I should probably share this to my social media. So there's probably a lot of benefit on streaming on Twitch, but I just feel like if YouTube can just promote my streams here, there's not much reason to to do it. I might I might start doing memberships, but or. Uh, you know the joining the thing but i'm not quite sure what benefits i would give besides like maybe extra lost wolves behind the scenes and stuff um but some people have been asking about that are they showing off new stuff today or are we just watching no 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 so uh this is brand new stuff uh we got new gameplay that is confirmed new gameplay in about 20 minutes here along with some coffee yeah i just got me some coffee um I'd probably do face cam, but I just, I don't know, I don't feel, I don't feel like I look great as of, as of late. And also, I'm, I'm moving a bunch of stuff around my room, so, uh, you know, I did just wake up after all. I'm not taking today so seriously as yesterday, but we still have gameplay coming in just a minute. And then, um, Thursday, they're gonna break down stuff. They're going to break down stuff, which is really neat. But still, today's probably the second best day, just objectively, as far as this time frame goes. What do you think about the new Spartan armor? I love it. In fact, why don't we uh, why don't we just look at that again? Because, um, you know what? I might just throw B-roll. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw the video I did up yesterday right over here, but I'm just gonna mute it and talk to you guys live because this was really, really informative, I, th I think. And if you haven't watched it, watch it because- Welcome back, just... Halo followers. Today, we got gameplay of loud. Halo Infinite <laughs> final. <laughs> yeah, so let's just, uh... yeah. So there's brand new images. There's, <laughs> oh man, I wish I had time to, to, to take a dump. <laughs> Would r love raw gameplay footage so we could get the feel of what we're looking at. Yeah, I agree. Uh, in fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to share the live chat. And there's there's a better way of doing this. I just really have not had time to do it the fancy way with, you know, special colors and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, what you're looking at is yesterday's video. It uh, actually topped off at 50,000 views yesterday, which is really crazy because the video was not doing very well at first. I think most people's videos weren't doing well right after E3, which I, I thought was interesting. But then they really took off later in the night, I think, looking at it. So, yeah, I mean, what you see is what you get so far. I mean, this looks like... A really cool mixture between Halo Reach, Halo 3, and some Halo 5 gameplay. And we know Sprint's back, we know Sliding's back, but we haven't seen Thruster, uh, Ground Pound, we haven't seen uh, Spartan, Spartan whatever, where you ram into something. Oh, right here, this ability's really neat. It's uh, the... Oh, crap, what is this? The tactical something, but basically it's a grenade that you kind of shoot off your wrist because there's wrist attachments. And then that can, you can see where the player is behind walls in a spherical. So it's kind of like Promethean Vision, but it's limited to wherever you fire it, which I thought was really neat. Um, 
Gravity, gravi gravity Hammer <laughs> looks sexy. Uh, I'm excited for Griff Ball. Certainly that's going to come back, right? There's also the Repulsor, which we see here in a second. How do I feel about the game? I feel like Halo's back, dude. I mean, some of you guys might feel differently, but I feel like Halo's back. So if you're just joining us, um, welcome. We are not looking at stuff from yesterday. We are actually looking at brand new gameplay coming in about 19 minutes. So stay tuned. Share the stream to your friends. Let them know that we're actually getting a Vidoc, if if you will. They don't really call it a Vidoc. I love this weapon, by the way. A harpoon. I never thought that 3 for 3 would actually do it. But look at this thing. It doesn't even really cause explosive damage, per se. It's just this impact, which is so cool. It It, it really... It really brings out the banished brute vibe because they would have a harpoon. Why wouldn't they? It's actually used on a player. I hope the harpoon is more crazy. I hope it can stick players to the wall. Like, that would be really neat. Also, sorry, I'm a little congested right now. So if I sound like a super nerd, it's because I'm a super nerd, but also I'm congested. Oscar Monzo, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. I really appreciate that. Thanks for everything, man. Been following me for nine years. Your videos have helped me through school and work. Can't wait for the next mission. Also, YouTube should recommend you more than they do. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they, um, sometimes YouTube's algorithm decides to promote me. Sometimes they don't. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, it's just luck. In fact, even though I, Halo Follower almost has 700,000 subscribers, only about, 15% of y'all are even recommended uh, content from what I see on my side. 15 to 20% are even recommended. And then, of course, not everyone's saying click on the video. So mainly what I depend on is the algorithm, like most people. And I could complain about it, but I'm just happy that my animations take off. You know, each of them have over 200,000 views. I think one doesn't, but like that, they're just getting so many, many views, and it's just so cool that people can, so many people are watching those, and which I, I do want to do more. Why don't you sell merch? Um, You know, my heart's just not in it right now. But that's a good question. So we got 16 minutes to brand new gameplay. How are you guys feeling about stuff? I love how you can grapple enemy weapons that have been dropped. We get our own AI. Right, this video that I posted yesterday, definitely check it out because it confirms so many things like bots. So many things that weren't at the E3, E3 conference. Also, Bazellus, thank you so much for the $5 donation. Hi, <laughs> Father. I think right now this is, I think it's the same guy. I'm pretty sure that's my Master Chief voice actor. Yes. Cool. Yeah. I think it was in a Hugh Moran video too. But thank you, Bazellus. I appreciate it. Hi, son. All right. More people are coming in. Welcome, guys. We got brand new gameplay dropping in 15 minutes. So stay tuned. Share the stream to your friends and family. And uh, tell them that gameplay is coming. All right. Brand new gameplay is coming. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what would be really nice right now? Why don't we take a look at the uh, the sneak peek? Because there's actually a, a teaser of, of this stuff. So I actually want to take a look at that real quick. So, what? Some people are talking about Starfield yesterday, and I never really talked about it. I don't know. I, I don't really have much thoughts on Starfield. I just... Uh, I think there's potential there, and I I know it's been in the works for a long time, and it's been highly anticipated, and it is a Bethesda game, but, um, yeah. I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna play the, um, we're gonna play the trailer or teaser that we're gonna see in about 15 minutes. I don't know how long this thing is. Um, the actual video that will be dropping, but we'll be watching it live, and I'll be muted myself, so. I want to take your mother Texas to Texas Roadhouse and have a passionate making, love making with her. Okay. Uh, Christian Kerbs, uh, thank you for the $5 donation and um, 
for taking my mother out to uh, the Texas Roadhouse. I appreciate it a lot. She needs it. <laughs> I'm, we're trying to watch a video and there's super chats falling yet. Okay, one second. One second. Let's watch this real quick. Remember how excited I was with like this big combat with vehicles going all over the place? Halo means something different for everyone, right? I think that that's what makes Halo great. Man, I love the soundtrack so far. Um, so yeah, there it was. It wasn't very long. Um, just simply a teaser of what we're going to see in about 14 minutes now. Um, it is confirmed to have new gameplay. Um, I'm just thrown off by that that comment by Christian Kerbs. I, I never had a, a super chat that was like kind of just such a a throwdown on my mother before it was weird I mean who does that <laughs> okay uh next alexander says the 2020s are the decade of the grappling hook let's make it happen yeah man grappling hook is back that's fun that's really fun um And, uh, you know, if you guys haven't seen already, we got brand new screenshots. I'll probably just be looping this video. Because um, there was there was actually a lot in this thing, you know. So. <sighs> thoughts on Sprint. Oh, my gosh. Someone just did a big super chat. Thank you, brother. 20 pounds. Lots of love to a fellow hey bro Halo brother. That's funny. I said brother before I saw that. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it a lot. Um, I really do. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 Lydius, what do I think I just suck at pronouncing things, but I also feel like people have some very unique names that are just not pronounceable to me, but, uh, El Nini says HCS playlist. Yeah. Um, this game's probably going to launch being competitive. And I don't know. I mean, it, it really didn't ring as being super competitive to me, you know, when we, when we watch this, uh, this gameplay here, you know, which I'll, I'll throw up now. I mean, I don't even know. A new day is upon us. So cool, man. A new generation built to fight. Together, I love we this. Are and by the way, the chopper, you guys, I mean... The chopper. And you know, I don't even I don't even like this skin from this, but we already it's already been confirmed several times that what we're gonna be getting here is uh is customization across the board, not just Spartans, but also on vehicles and weapons, that there's gonna be cosmetic changes. So I wanna get the, the classic brute skin, to be honest with you. There's certainly going to be a lot of skins because they got to make up for this game being free to play, right? You this, to me, reads as a lot of fun. I love the armor abilities that are pickups, basically, because that's essentially what these are. They're armor abilities. And they're going to be adding more after launch, which is a, a pretty cool aspect. Of did you see the new campaign trailer? I did. Yeah, I thought it was beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. When do you think would be the best time to release infinite flight test things? Uh, I think they were talking about July, actually. I'd have to recheck that, but yeah, they're going to be doing trying to do Halo Insider flights. Pre-release technical previews, as they are called. Claim the enemy flag. Return it to base. Power Rangers out. Ordnance drop inbound. I'm good, Elite Hub. 
Brand new gameplay, eight minutes. Hell yeah. Oh, Alexander, thank you once again. I'm a fan that so far there doesn't seem to be mobility ability. Uh, mobility ability is like in Halo 5. The slam and charge were so broken. Yeah, um, I thought they were more redundant than broken. But yeah, I think it also took away some, some strategy. But that's just me. You know what? I'm gonna... I haven't had breakfast, so I'm gonna eat this thing. I think once, once, once the multiplayer overview starts, and hopefully, hopefully, there is, I won't be caught with banana in my mouth when I'm supposed to talk to you guys. So, uh, if you're just joining us, welcome. Um, I am actually one with Xbox Game Pass. Shut up. Okay, I'm gonna be uh, mirroring the stream over on Halo Waypoint, which uh, is going to show us new gameplay, multiplayer overview. And if you haven't seen it, there's a little little teaser. Not much to it, but we just... I mean, all you really need to know is that new gameplay is coming in like seven minutes. So, yeah. Did you see the Ragdoll effect? I did. Absolutely, my dude. Um, Ragdoll is, is so cool. I'm so glad that they didn't even care about worrying about how that looks. Because the Ragdoll is just something that's just going to have to stay in gaming for the rest of forever. It's, uh, it's so stupid and fun. You know, oh, also, I don't know if you guys know this. Again, watch yesterday's video, the one that's like Halo Infinite News Blowout bots. Watch that one because, which we're kind of like, we have the, the video kind of using as B-roll right now. But listen, guys, no more red versus blue. They're using an outline system that can be changed and modified uh, that's meant for uh, color blind people that are maybe visually impaired in one way or another, but there's going to be things that, of course, since that box is so friendly towards the impaired and disabilities, then you can expect to be able to change that. So it looks like if you always want to play on blue team, you can you can set that up in your settings. And I'm excited to see Halo go back to its roots. I've always loved this franchise. I always thank you for providing lore and insight into the deeper aspects. And of the Halo universe. Thank you so much, my dude. Wondering Fool for the $10 super chat. You know, I've tried my best. I, I've I've certainly made mistakes. And but you know, I've tried I've tried to give the best service I can for you know for what I do. You know, I want to make give back. God, I'm so so congested. I'm so sorry. Uh, but thank you for the the super chat there. I uh I try to do my best. A lot of people complain I make my videos too long, but I mean, I, I, I like to dive deep, you know. I like to, and sometimes, yeah, it's, it's to get the the extra revenue. I mean, this is my job, you know. But I like to dive deeper more than anyone else. That's that's what made Halo followers so successful is making longer videos. Yeah, if I can take a small leak and make a ten minute video out of it, because I'm going to be talking about everything. I'm going to be talking about other similar leaks and other similar facts and other really cool things, you know? So, five minutes to new gameplay. Guys, share the stream on your Discords, on your Twitter, on your Facebook, if you got a friend that's into Halo. Man, it's, it's a good time to have a friend that's into Halo, you know? To talk about... You know what's uh, what's going on to complain about things. Um, missed this one by Tony B Jr. Super chat. A question that also did did the video stop? Oh, I wonder why the video stopped there. Well, um, there goes the main chat. <laughs> okay, a, a question that no one is talking about: Are you are assassinations in Halo Infinite? Um, uh, I actually, uh, am wondering that myself. I don't think we saw that. I don't think we saw that. So we got four more minutes. This is exciting. Not as, not as exciting as yesterday, but assassinations, that's something maybe I hope to see today. I think that there's no reason not to have them because they're so, they're such an inconsequential part of the gameplay. They're not like abilities and they're fun. And also as Stelio 
Paparazzi, thank you for the $1 super chat. X097 Gaming says, can't wait for flighting to take place. This game will be epic. I know it. Yeah, uh, I I got I got a good feeling about it too. I got a really good feeling about it too. Also, where is a? Uh... Oh, there we go. Just trying to turn on the music again. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, three minutes. Yeah. So, are they going to show gameplay? Yeah, they are. They are going to show gameplay. Any minute now. Any minute. And uh, I, I, I'm hoping we get something that's a little bit more... Um, a little bit more calm because that was a very cinematic trailer. And... I haven't even set this video up properly, honestly. <laughs> uh, anyways, guys, so um, this is fun. I really like, as of late, I really like streaming. You know, I don't know if I'm just going to go right back to not streaming, but um, it's really cool having everyone here and, and talking. Halo Swallower. Hell yeah. What a throwback. All right, one one second, one second. I just have to. Oh gosh. All right. All righty. Uh, now I'm panicking. Okay, cool. So. I think we're almost ready. Um, cool. Cool beans. Oh, I feel good. I feel good about this, you know? Like, this is... Man. Also, my God, man. You know, that's... 22,000 people are in the main chat right now. <laughs> Look at that chat go, man. I like our more peaceful, smaller stream, but still. Still a lot of people. Almost 1,700 of y'all. Would comment. Thank you for the, the $1. Is that can Canada? C-A, $1. I guess it's Canada money. Thank you for the donation and super chat, regardless. Appreciate it. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Let's go. I don't I don't really know what else to say about this. I know this is gonna be kind of like a vidoc. It's gonna be There's gonna be gameplay. That's what we're about to get here. So Oh, her new name is Vulu. The new AI is apparently named Vulu. I gotta confirm that, but apparently Spanish subtitles say that? Or is that just in Spanish? Like, what is her name in? Is it different if you have English subtitles? But that's cool that, you know, captions are such an underrated part of, like, analyzing, but usually they have a lot of, uh, a lot of pretty important things in there. Technocraft, thank you for the, uh, super chat. E3, let's go! Yeah, E3's not over. A lot of people thought it was, but All right, now we have this screen. God, I'm congested. Okay, when should I start eating the banana, guys? Probably at the end of the... This is a countdown to eating breakfast. Yeah, boy. Okay, I'm probably gonna stretch this out. I don't know why it's... Yeah, all right. I'm going to a new channel as Halo 4 Follower. I wonder why people spell it with an A, but thank you. I appreciate it. Mello, thank you for the super chat. 
Is it, uh, is the volume good, you guys? Okay. I mean, it's probably just loud relative to me, right? This this is a pretty loud. I don't know why it's so loud. Uh, death. <laughs> it's good now, right? Okay. Cool. I might I might turn it up though because um when it starts because this previous screen is so loud for some reason. So I wish I had a banana cam on right now. So. Just casually be eating a banana. It's probably getting quieter. Alright. Here we go. feeling of like being in a firefight and hearing the, the click of the gun, throwing it down, grabbing one off the wall. So my gunner's upside down and he's like laying in. I see kill assist, kill assist, kill assist. Any pistol across any of the games. Whatever gun allows me to feel the most like John Wick, I am there. I remember how excited I was with like this big combat with vehicles going all over the place. Halo means something different for everyone, right? I think that that's what makes Halo great. What is Halo multiplayer? And for me, it boils down to this tight arena style combat and big team battle, this wide open vehicle infused uh, kind of combat. We're taking that awesome legacy or classic Halo combat experience and modernizing it in ways that'll feel fresh to old players and really exciting to new players. We're gonna give you great ways to customize your Spartan, really make your super soldier your own, and we're kicking off a journey, an experience that's gonna evolve month to month, season to season, year after year. For me, working through this multiplayer of this game, and the toughest challenge I think was really about how do we respect the legacy of what came before us, but still build something that feels new. We've tried to bring all these elements of legacy and really inject them into Halo Infinite, not just like in a, in a in a way where you kind of won't notice it, where you feel like, oh, they really designed this to be a celebration of previous Halo, as well as an iteration of where Halo can go next. The vision of Arena was all about a tight experience. It was all about being fair. It was all about earning everything on the map, earning everything, every kill you get. Going back to like, what is the core foundation of what made the great Halo multiplayer arena matches, great. Halo, it's really about fair and balanced starts. So everybody's on equal footing when they come off the rip. And then once they start running around, it's about scavenging, it's about finding new toys and, and kind of developing your play style as you run through the match. What makes Halo feel like Halo? Um, I feel like uh, the answer to that question is, is the sandbox. Like, the sandbox is Halo. When we set out to look at Halo Infinite from a high level and the direction of what it is, there's lots of exciting things there because we really wanted to push what are the things that are true to Halo, but what are the things that fans haven't seen yet? Equipment is back, but equipment is kind of, has, the, has, a, has a bigger voice than ever before. We ask questions to ourselves of, uh, if you could go after you know, a power weapon to get a bunch of kills, uh, would you do that or could you go and get grapple to make sure that you swing yourself to the other side of a map to back cap a stronghold? We saw that as like another avenue of not just skill expression but tactics for teams to coordinate around. The exciting combinatory nature of 
you know, this toy plus this toy and how those interact with objectives is super amazing. Looking at how the power-ups play, like your classic power-ups, like the overshield and the active camouflage. For this title, what we're looking at, what we're excited for, is you pick that up and you choose when you activate it. It goes into your inventory. If you haven't used it, and someone kills you in multiplayer, you drop that overshield and then they could take it, use it for themselves. That to me is very legacy, but we took the equipment side of it and modernized it. When it comes to the vehicles, we went in and decided to invest a lot in the, the systems. When I take damage in my Warthog, uh, my, my wheels can get blown off, my hood could get blown off. There's different aspects of the vehicle that change how my vehicle handles now. And that's something that's brand new. The other thing we added to that is like this doomsday mechanic. So when you hit this threshold, the vehicle catches fire and it's very much, you've got a certain amount of health or a certain amount of time and you gotta choose what you wanna do with the last minutes of this vehicle. We've got a cousin to the Warthog, which is the Razorback. The back has this like multi-storage compartment that you can put a lot of stuff into. So if you wanna put like detached turrets, power weapons, fusion coils, objectives, and that is what's really making uh, the Razorback kick a lot of butt in MP and campaign. The levels define pace for the game, how frantic it is, and they define that iconic fantasy for players as they're entering that match. What do they want to do? Um, what type of experience are they hoping to have? What kind of combat, what kind of dance floor is there available to have that combat in? For me, BTV is all about experiencing uh, the full extent of the sandbox of Halo in just one match, right? Like you see the vehicles, the weapons, the equipment. We really wanted to take that kind of concept, those feels you had, you know, playing the, play, playing the previous games, and just turn the volume up. Vehicles are no longer just spawning at bases anymore. We have pelicans delivering them, and we have a commander in your ear telling you that pelicans are going to be dropping off these vehicles. Scorpion tank is inbound. We have Halo 2 style Delta Halo mission weapon pods that fall from the sky to resupply the field. That's where it makes it feel like, like a real battlefield and, and it's very exciting. This is not just more players, this is just this certain beautiful slice of sci-fi chaos. The announcer is your big gameplay moments, your game modes, just like the way it was before. Play, catch. Personal AI is really a reflection and information for the player. Personal AI, designation button. So if a player grabs the flag, your personal AI is going to tell you to, you know, get that thing back to base and give you some like moment-to-moment -moment updates. Our team took the enemy flag. What if we can let players choose their own AI, and each one of those are different voices, so that players can find the one that fits their personality and their mood the best? They they add to the sense of like me. As a, as a Spartan, being more important, and, and for us in multiplayer, it is really about becoming a Spartan, your Spartan. You are you inside of the Halo universe. The body of customization content that we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization combinations for Spartans on the battlefield. That includes things like armor coatings, uh, armor emblems, various armor effects, down to the individual armor pieces, so your shoulders, your gloves, your knee pads, your helmet, your visor, your helmet attachments. Then you look at weapons, and we've got a whole slew of customization offerings there. Vehicles have a, have a huge pool of customizations, too. We support customization in the game. Players can do the same thing on HaloWaypoint.com, as well as the Halo Waypoint app. The player also customizes the Spartan, the soldier inside the suit. We want the Spartan to represent the player as much as possible. They can change their body type and their voice, as well as choose prosthetics for the first time. Coatings offer us a unique opportunity to craft some hyper-polished looks and let you express yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. So we're coming at this from a player-first mentality. So what that means is that there's no random loot in this. There's no loot boxes. It's very important to us that everyone understands exactly how they unlock customization content. And we have a variety of places where they can do that. First off is the Battle Pass. The Halo Battle Pass will never be taken away from you. And what I mean by that is once you buy it, it's yours and does not expire. In future seasons, you can purchase old battle passes as well as the current battle pass and choose which battle pass to put your progression towards. 
All of these rewards are single source, so you're never gonna be confused about where things come from. If you can unlock something in the battle pass, we're not gonna let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game. All customization is just cosmetic. Every season will have its own theme and introduce new components, new looks, new gameplay for players, new opportunities to earn and collect cool rewards. We've seen the, the samurai already. That's one of our event armor cores. And that's gonna be something that players can earn through gameplay for free. With us going free to play for the multiplayer part of the game, like that was a big goal because, you know, how do we have a way we can always bring players in, right? And they can, when we have a new update there, there's, They'll just dip their toes in if they even just want to see it. Not only are we free to play, but we're free to play on PC as well as console. And what that means is we're able to get the biggest audience we've ever had. I mean, everybody gets to play with no barriers. And even better, your progression carries from one platform to the next. Getting our game to be on PC and console at the same time is an amazing chance for us to really just kind of excite new players about the game. How can we do things like make cross-play interesting and like even in just customs being able to just play with your friends that like some people have PCs and some people have consoles and like let them talk to each other let them be friends why are you here to be a Spartan the Academy is a place that you can go uh, with an MP to kind of onboard into the experience it's great for newer players who are still picking up the controls and also people who want to warm up before they head into matchmaking it's a series of experiences both a tutorial to get started for the first time weapon drills to practice with specific items and also training mode that you can use to just get warm explore the game as you want to for players who are new to halo let's help them learn what this universe is about some of these characters what, what are they about and help them kind of know the vocabulary that people have been speaking for now almost 20 years so that we, when they come in there, they don't feel like they're behind everyone else. They can kind of come in on an even footing. I mean, I'm super jazzed about bots. I think they're awesome. Our goal with bots has been to have a variety of difficulties that kind of provide a good training partner for wherever you're at in the experience. Partnering with our players on the road to launch and after launches absolutely critical, right? I mean, Halo's always been about the community conversation. We want to make sure we hear our players, make changes where we can based on that feedback, make sure the game is ready for launch, and then even beyond launch. What I'm genuinely excited about is taking the game out of our hands and putting it into the community's hands. You know, whether it's seeing what people make in Forge or the content that they're able to create with theater, watching streamers go after the game, to get involved, you go to haloinsider.com, put in your info with your gamer tag, and we should be able to reach out to you if we want to invite you to a Halo Infinite flight. We feel like we've got a pretty good selection at launch and what's going to be there for our fans. And this isn't going to be something that is just a static set of items. We have some new stuff in the works already and just can't wait to really get into that as soon as this game comes out. New maps, new modes, new ways to customize your Spartan, launches just the beginning. Now we're just gonna be able to talk, interact more frequently, and that's just gonna be great. That is the future of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Thank you to the community for all their feedback over the years so far, and uh, I'm looking forward to the Road to launch, launch itself, and beyond. That was awesome. That was totally worth, my God, there's so much to break down in that. Oh, bro. Okay, now there's probably gonna be- Play it day one with Xbox Game Pass. There's probably gonna be a fallout of some information, right? No, probably not. Well, that, that was like, what, 13 minutes? That was the premiere of yeah, about 13 minutes. I kind of want to watch that again. There was so much to... And this time we'll we'll sit here and really break down stuff in like a live analysis. But that was really neat. Let's, let's go ahead and break this whole thing down, man. 
this is a new map. I'm probably going to turn off the music because I'm probably getting annoying. But, uh, yeah, this looks like the map. I think I've heard it called Hydra. I don't think it's actually called Hydra. Maybe just Axis. But, uh, anyway, this is on the map. We have a super chat real quick. Notice how the Spartan shields glow brighter at the point of bullet impact. Yeah, that's something I have noticed. I saw in the gameplay yesterday that when you shoot the head, the head turns all yellow. Um, so maybe when you're shooting, you can quickly identify which part you're actually landing shots on, which is pretty cool. They really thought about going in depth with this kind of stuff. And as you can see, you know, when the player dies, they drop the skull and their weapons. And, oh my god! Wait, we already know that, don't we? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The spike grenade is back. I forgot about the spike grenade completely. This looks like the same map, Axis, or actually with that text right there, it looks like it says Hydra, actually. So this map might be called Hydra, or I don't know, we'll just call it Hydra Axis for now, just because this is the first map they revealed, but it, I'm pretty sure it, it looks similar. But one thing we haven't seen on this map is this big exposed window. So, yeah. Um, this map looks like that i don't know what we should start coming up with nicknames for these maps but this map looks like the big team battle map that we saw earlier so it's kind of looks like zeta halo you know obviously there's a lot there's a lot to break down in this my gosh <laughs> okay so yes yeah, this map i thought that map was maybe a forge map but under closer examination i'm pretty sure it's just that's just how it looks um you know, from far away, you know, it's just needs a little bit of work maybe, but, opt you know, optimizing the map, making it look cleaner and stuff. But yeah, this must be the Academy map, right? I don't know. We'll call that. Yeah, this is the Academy map. So Academy is a new mode where we can train with bots. In fact, there's a whole section where we're actually going to be able to uh, customize the bots and, and add different amount of bots with different amounts of equipment and you can actually change your i think it can change your gender but at least body size and certainly gender i mean that's always that's been available since halo 3 so i want to worry about that some people said no no female spartans but no i want to i want to worry too much about that um let me try to decrease the size of this a little bit and maybe move it over here so not much to real. That was a bulldog, by the way. Let's actually play some of the audio. Kill assist, kill assist. Any pistol across any of the games. Whatever gun allows me to feel the most like John Wick, I am there. So someone said pistol stars. I don't know if that's true. By the way, player count was confirmed yesterday at 24 players total. So Big Team Battle 2.0 is looking pretty gnarly all right there was the razorback that we saw which we will get to but that vehicle <laughs> actually you can put stuff into the the vehicle like the flag or objectives maybe put a bomb in there and then grab it when you jump out really cool but we'll talk about that soon how excited I there's the rocket my god it's beautiful i, I think that's the rocket launcher or is that the skewer i can't that might oh, actually be the skewer. big combat with no that's the rocket launcher yeah i just saw there yeah that is definitely the rocket launcher. If you notice when you aim in with the sniper, there's a glare to reveal your position, like in Call of Duty. And he mentions the BR at the end, Battle Royale. He mentions BR. Okay, maybe I missed that. I think I missed that, you guys. But they mentioned Battle Royale here. That's interesting. By the way, if you're just tuning in, um, we're recapping the Waypoint multiplayer overview of, of Halo Infinite. Um, this is brand new gameplay that we did not see yesterday, but rather is just a few minutes old. So, yeah, let's keep going. It's going all over the place. Halo means something different for everyone, right? I think that that's what makes Halo great. It's, uh, sorry, it's 12 versus 12 players. What is... Halo multiplayer. And for me, it boils down to this tight arena style combat and big team battle, this wide open vehicle infused uh, kind of combat. We're taking that awesome legacy or classic 
Halo combat experience and modernizing it in ways that'll feel fresh to old players and really exciting to new players. We're gonna give you great ways to customize your Spartan, really make your super soldier your own, and we're kicking off a journey, an experience that's gonna evolve month to month, season to season, year after year. Heck yeah. For me, working through this multiplayer of this game, and the toughest challenge I think is really about how do we respect the legacy of what came before us, but still build something that feels new. We've tried to bring all these elements of legacy and of where Halo can go next. So I wonder, like, I love seeing maps in Halo that aren't just the same thing over and over and over. And in this case, we got something completely new. It really reminds me of Halo 2's maps. You know, Halo should not just be metal facilities. I'm so tired of metal facilities. We actually have a comment here on the topic of bots during the season of uh, se season six. A friend of mine found some strings and bots and bot count in the MCC menu. Maybe a cut prototype. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll get to that later. But yeah, bots are going to be making themselves into custom games as well as this new training mode uh, that is ran by Commander Lorette. You can actually see some of the new armor. There is Noble Six, baby. The Mark Six B, I believe, helmet. But the first part of this game is actually going to have the the first season when this game launches is going to have Heroes of Reach, and that is going to be the season DLC. So what you see, and they talk about the battle pass, which I don't quite fully understand yet, but I don't think you need to buy anything to get this armor here that you see. The Reach armor is just going to be the first batch of armor that comes out with the game, I believe. Technocraft says, pretty sure they brought back the Halo 3 map Valhalla, the BTB map you were talking about earlier. Yes. So we could call that Valhalla 3.0, I guess, for now. But that's a great observation. I, I talked to Infinite Fortress about that yesterday. That map does appear to be uh, based on Valhalla and Blood Gulch, I believe. But it's like a new, more closed-in version. The vision of a... And here, look at those light rays, man. That looks absolutely Arena was beautiful. All about a tight and we actually see something on the HUD there. I don't know if y'all saw that. We actually have a few things to break down here, but let's let's take a look at that again. Maybe we should go ahead and put this in slow-mo. What do y'all think? That way we can really see every little thing happening. And since it's in 60 frames per second, we're really getting a lot of clean detail. Right here, there seems to be a skull floating on like what looks like a weapon holder. Probably going to be something in Forge. And this player is holding... It has the Combat Evolved helmet. Very cool from Reach. Very, very cool. And then here's the Bulldog at work. You can really see how... How... Uh, actually not powerful it is at a range because when i first saw this i thought this was very op probably for campaign it is op but this weapon is meant to be like a mauler kind of weapon just rapid fire mauler from like halo 3 it's just going to be very weak away from the players and very strong close up so you don't want to get close to a player that has a bulldog but see look he's He's missed quite a bit, but still, like, the shots he's got have been pretty weak. And then there's the melee coming in. And we actually see, like, a battle, battle rifle hologram on the wall. And it looks like time is running out on it. Or maybe that's how much ammo is left in that. I don't know. It looks like a weapon on the wall. Right? Looks like th that's Academy. Trash aim? Probably. Probably. Drawing says... I, don't, I didn't like how all the maps look industrial and not foreigner. I hope they have maps like Epiton Construct. They do. Actually, the, uh, the, the island map that we saw yesterday looked very much like those maps. That's my, that might be why you uh, are bringing that up, drawing. But uh, thank you for the super chat. And what we can see through the wall, actually, I saw this earlier. I wanted to point this out so y'all can all take note of it. But there's actually a blue Spartan uh, throughout the wall there that must be telling us where the enemy is. It's an outline. Do you see that? So red and blue colors are gone. All right. Take note of that. In all these gameplay clips, we are looking at an outline, which is very, very easy to see uh, between like the yellow and the red meshing together. Maybe it's not easy for everyone to see because, you know, but yeah. So outlines, take note that this is red versus blue technically, but not really anymore because you are shooting this player shooting at a green colored Spartan, although they have a red outline. So, you know, where allies are through walls. I like that. 
even though we used to have like a little waypoint thing. And then another player with a red outline. So bye-bye red versus blue colors. Hello, original colors, which is always something I thought was like a little bit unnecessary, like taking over team colors. But an outline system I like because you still get that personalization. And there's actually some sup, something going on here. It looks like a preview of some Spartans. Yeah. So, looks very clean, man. The lighting is amazing. I don't know if y'all saw, like... Actually, you know what? Maybe maybe I can show y'all real quick. Because this is... Uh... And now the chat's probably disappeared. Right? <laughs> Hold on. This is so cool. So I'm on my Twitter. This is by Uber Nick. But look at this. This is campaign back in 2020. This is what it looks like now. It's like night and day difference. Really, there's only a few things that have changed if you take a close look. But like, it's just like the contrast. There's an atmosphere in the valley. These smoke, these smoke pillars areas here just don't look good. But now they do. It's very lower opacity, but it's more spread out, more white, which really gives a good contrast between the trees that are nearly black. So this looks very, very beautiful, in my opinion. I'm going to refresh the stream real quick. Um, I think we just had a super chat. Thank you, Mysterian, for the super chat there. Appreciate it. And feel free to say something if you're going to super chat. But... Yeah, let's go on. We're only two minutes into the, the video, so there's there's still quite a lot to uh, to talk about here. So here we are going inside this player. That was kind of a weird transition. I wonder if this is like the beginning of Academy. And they, they didn't show it explicitly. Where's the HUD? Well, here's the HUD. So they didn't show it explicitly, but I think we're actually going to be able to customize, customize our Spartans underneath the armor, which we saw... Yesterday, where there was eight Spartans and Lorette was talking to all the Spartans, but we we weren't actually in any armor, right? And also, I wonder if these are Spartan 4s or if they're Spartan 5s. If this is a new generation of Spartans, if if uh, Oni decided to start kidnapping kids again <laughs> for the, uh, the program. But there's a nice... This is what a lot of people were hoping today would be, and I, I'm glad it is this too, which is just a nice look at the HUD which we didn't see yesterday. And, you know, the radars on the left, the uh, notifications are on the mid-left, as you would expect them to be, and, and then the, the ammo and guns and stuff is on the bottom right. So, obviously, this is pre-release, and this is a facility that's apparently dedicated to Sergeant Avery Johnson, all right? Really cool, uh, cool shout-out to him, right? So, I actually didn't notice it, but it looks like there's water dripping from this map. It's for Whirlpool Dam, so that's interesting. There's This is probably, you know, naming this map Hydra is probably a good idea because there's probably a lot involving, well, water in this map. I didn't really know what these things were until now, but it says clearly Whirlpool Dam. And I wonder if these will be able to be modified or changed throughout the gameplay, if they're changing at all as... You know, if you press a button, maybe it can unleash the water. I don't know. Just just some food for thought. But Game Mayor says, was that ADS and Smart Link in the Needler shot? And Andrew said, do you think they will have any type of foreigner weapons or equipment? They do. And we saw that yesterday. I probably won't be recapping what I did yesterday. But yes, there was a foreigner weapon that we saw that apparently had two firing modes that were kind of like Chewbacca's rifle in Battlefront 2 where you can shoot horizontally or you can have a powered up shot if you hold it down that can incinerate players but it looked very foreigner it didn't look like a promethean weapon and i expect all promethean weapons are gone at this point i think we're going to be seeing stuff that will be more resemblant of the foreigner and halo legends designs which i'm very very pleased to uh to say and think about so now we're talking about the sandbox here and maybe we'll just like play that all over because someone did mention the needler Let's, uh, let's, let's For me, working through this multiplayer of this game, and the toughest challenge I think was really about how do we 
respect the legacy of what came before us, but still build something that feels new. We've tried to bring all these elements of legacy and really inject them into Halo Infinite, not just like in a, in a, in a way where you kind of won't notice it, where you feel like, oh, they really designed this to be a celebration of previous Halo, as well as an iteration of where Halo can go next. The vision of Arena was all about a tight experience. It was all about being fair. It was all about earning everything on the map, earning everything, every kill you get. Going back to like, what is, is the there a radar? foundation of what made the... Uh, so I think I did miss the super chat there. I, I don't know where the uh, Needler shot was in. I might have to look at that later, but thank you for the super chat, guys. They mentioned a battle pass. Remember that if people are going to be developing for this game, then BP will be extend the game's lifespan. And yeah, there's some thoughts about that. Thank you for the super chat there. Um... Absolutely. Uh, I'm just going to keep this video playing while I read over the super chats here. Chat's covering the radar. Uh, so I don't know about the ADS. I'm going to skip that now. Is there a radar? Yes. That chat's in the way. Oh! Oh, my bad. Uh, that's embarrassing. But yeah, there is a radar. Sorry about that, guys. I knew, like, wherever I put the chat, it's going to get in the way. So maybe I'll just turn that off for now. But yeah, there is most definitely a radar. Sorry about that, guys. Um, shoot, I don't know where, I don't know where it is now, but it is there. But anyway, yeah, let's let's continue to break this thing down. Maybe put it in slow mo again. Yeah, here it is. So, sorry about that. There is the radar in the bottom left. What did you think of the CE physics where you can throw a grenade at a weapon and have it fly towards you? Personally, I love it. I'm not actually quite sure what you're talking about. Do you mean the repulsor? Are you talking about the repulsor there? Because that's really cool. I'm, I'm really excited to play with the abilities. But thank you for the super chat. Uh, Suspicious Cosmos says, I'm really just afraid of the free-to-play portion because look how hackers flooded Call of Duty. The same thing will happen to Halo. You know, that's just uh, unfortunate... That's just an unfortunate kind of thing that happens with popularity. When you when 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 something gets big, it's just going to be challenged by the masses, and the masses will hack and troll and things like that. But it's a good thing. It's a side consequence to a game being successful. You know, even though I think MCC only has like five thousand, seven thousand daily viewer uh, players. If there, I did actually run into some hackers recently, but. Uh, Anyway, the energy sword looks great. Coupling the energy sword with the grappling hook is a really great idea, I think. It's probably going to be really super, super fun. Probably going to put the chat on the top left, by the way, just because I think it'll be out of the way of everything. So take a look at this. Not this guy talking slowly. <laughs> it says canal next to radar map locations. Ooh, yeah, that that I, I could see that being a thing. Um, here's a gravity hammer in, in the works. Boom. Very cool. And, you know, think about the skins that we're going to get as well. I really like this map. It's very pretty. It reminds me of, I think it was New Mombasa and Halo 2. Probably going to be based off that. And this looks like territories here. Man, I can't just wait to swing around the map with a grappling hook and an energy sword. There might be a game mode where it's just those two things. Everyone spawns with the gravity. I, I mean, there's so many different modes. And, and think about Griff Ball, man. I mean, with the grappling hook, there's so many stupid things that could be in this game. Do you think there would be more banished vehicles? Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll be taking a look at that soon. There's lots of banished vehicles. Five words, low gravity, grappling hook, and Griff Ball. Oh, Scar Claw. I think you beat me to it. But yeah, that's... Yeah, dude. Oh, look at that. That's the shock rifle. Did y'all see that? That is the shock rifle. And look! Oh my gosh, dude. You could do some insane things. You could do some insane things in game modes. If you can use these abilities like to block off a part of the map. So this player is getting harassed by another player with a shock rifle. And it looks like he runs into this thing. And it stops him. I might be wrong. Maybe he's just running around it. It looks like he was kind of glitching up on it for a second there. So maybe there's a little bit of a force there, but you can still walk through it. The smart link is at 214. 
Uh, I want to take a look at that real quick because someone said, oh, there we go. Is that aim down sights confirmed? So right here would be it, and then he pulls out of it. Yeah, so I guess aim down sights is returning to some degree, but I don't know. You know, that was a, a big thing with Halo 5. So you can see that there is a mixture going on between the different Halo games. And let's get back to where we were. This player's getting... Yeah, there's the shock rifle. I'm pretty sure, unless you guys have any other speculation you'd like to share about time they ported Forza's bot system to Halo. Yeah, um, thank you guys for the super chat. Thanks, Michael. Forza's... I'm not very familiar. I'm not a big fan of racing games, but... I think bots can go a long, long way as far as improving the the game. And, you know, I think Halo suffered from, like, players leaving a lot. You know, 3v4, am I right? Boom. Boom. Oh, I love that. And the skull kind of... And here's just a look at what Griffball... Might tell with the gravity hammer. I know that wasn't Griff Ball. I'm just saying. We're going to be seeing that right there. That animation a lot. But so one thing that they confirmed in the video. Was that you can pick up equipment. But that doesn't mean you have to use it right away. So like obviously. This is active camo. I think they were talking about active camo at this point. But it seems like you don't have to use it right away. And then there's a button. So you have like an inventory. Like you do your two weapons. And then you can just use this. Whenever you feel like it. And then if you don't use it in time, someone else will kill you and be able to use it themselves. But yes, uh, Shosan, yes, they did confirm bots. I think it's only, a, a, at most, it's got to be 16, right? 16 bots. I don't know. They do they do talk a little bit more about bots here uh, in a little bit. But There's let's play a little bit. Expression, but uh. tactics for teams to coordinate around. <laughs> the exciting combinatory nature of you know, this toy plus this toy and how those interact with objectives is super amazing. Looking at how the power-ups play, like your classic power-ups, like the overshield and the active camouflage. For this title, what we're looking at, what we're excited for, is you pick that up and, that, and you I, choose when you overshield. activate it. It goes into your inventory. If you haven't used it and someone kills you in multiplayer, you drop that overshield and then they can take it, use it for themselves. That to me is very- Yeah, see, look, there's, did you see that? Cause that's, that's pretty important to the gameplay. If someone starts killing you and you just want to, you're like, crap, I need to use this, you know, this overshield, for example. I, I don't know what that, if this is it, but you start using it and then you don't have time to put it on because there's, there's a, it takes time to take it off your armor and equip it. You see that? And so while he's trying to put it on, that he's getting destroyed by this bulldog. And then, of course, he drops it down there on the ground. Leg. And then this player can pick it up. And then use it when they want to, like you're seeing right here. And that's that's really all I wanted with a Halo game. Like, I'm not going to say I was asking for this for the past 10 years, but that's basically the secret recipe to Halo. This, it's, it's, not, it's taking away default things and putting it on the map to be fought over. And when you have more dynamic equipment items, which like we saw in Halo 3, it can change the game entirely. Right? Equipment is, I believe, the secret sauce to what makes Halo just an arena shooter into something really special and beautiful. Um, of course, with the, some of the sandbox items, too, are, are absolutely needed. But I believe that's this is going to make Halo into a dynamic experience that we really have not seen since Halo 3. This, I mean, in some regards, and this is a pretty big, pretty big thing to say, right? Big claim. But this might be more fun than Halo 3. If they do it right, this might be way more dynamic. This might be Halo 3 on steroids. You know, the sandbox looks absolutely beautiful. By the way, here is the BTB map. I don't know what to call this map. If you guys have any ideas, uh, something I could just re reference this map without saying the BTB map. But <laughs> we do know that Big Team Battle is returning. Not not Forge crap anymore. These are This is real devotion and thoughts going into... To, to big team battle. I mean, there's all kinds of wacky things going on and there's a missing will. Do you see the missing will, you guys? That Warhawk is trapped. So look at that. That is so cool. Oh my God. 
Corey says, opinion on ray tracing being added later at a later date. Absolutely. Thank you for the super chat, Corey. Ray tracing is absolutely needed at this point, right? At least on the uh, Xbox Series X, right? And uh, whoa, I did not know this could be up to 4K. Although, I can't stream that high. But anyway, that Warthog is missing a wheel. You know, nothing crazy. It's just missing a wheel. It's not that that insane right it's halo and there's a missy wheel and look i just love how this vehicle is suffering from miss, miss this missy wheel so look before when you shot a vehicle you just had to do damage and it was just had one uh, vehicles just had one layer of uh damage that you had to punch through and then the vehicle would explode now if you're let's say you have a sniper you shoot the tire that warthog i think in theory might just have a car wreck it might just roll over and blow up Oh my gosh. I love how it's kind of limping around. But I mean, it's still going. You know, it's still working. This doomsday mechanic. So when you hit this threshold, the vehicle catches fire and it's very much, you've got a certain amount of health or a certain amount of time and you gotta choose what you wanna do with the last minutes of this vehicle. So right there, they basically confirmed that there's a doom counter. Or a so. certain amount of time. When a vehicle reaches a damage threshold, it'll just have a ticking time bomb kind of mechanism on it and eventually it's going to blow up but you'll know because it'll catch on fire which is really cool it reminds me of the ghost back in um i think halo 2 and halo 3 they would just sit around and then they would react and then blow up but this is kind of on a different more interactive level and you gotta choose what you want to do with the last minutes of this vehicle we've got a cousin to the war now this is the razorback and i've been wanting to talk about this since we we watched this uh, you know, originally like 25 minutes ago. And this is so cool. This is the cousin of the Warthog. I'm going to play the actual clip and then we'll talk about it after and do an oh, analysis. Which is the Razorback. The back has this like multi-storage compartment that you can put a lot of stuff into. What so if you want to put like hell? detached turrets, power weapons, fusion coils, objectives. And that is what it's really so making cool. uh, the Razorback kick a lot of butt in MP and campaign. The levels define pace so, for the game. So, I, I mean, I just, I, I know he pretty turrets, much said everything there is weapons. to say about this thing, but that is seriously neat. People have been begging for a troop hog for the longest time. And look, there's two people sitting back there. There's two people, two Spartans are chilling out on the back of this thing. I thought this was just a one, you know, two people up front and then one person in the back. But this is, maybe it's going to be able to be carry up to four Spartans in the back. I mean... We'll have to keep looking through the gameplay and see if there's any of that. But, by the way, this is the Desert Island map. That's the official name of it. I'm just going to call it until, until we figure out the actual name. This might be a part of the Vol the new Hala map. <laughs> I see someone said a second ago. But uh, the Vol Hala map, I don't think so. Because that one looks very pine tree and forest. And, you know, down in the ravine. And this looks... This is obviously some... some entirely new map that looks like Construct or Epitaph from Halo 3. This new Warthog adds so much fun. Yeah, I think so. You can put stuff on the back of this hog. I, I, I wonder how that's going to be done because, like, I imagine trying to get in the hog when you really just meant to put the flag back there. And, yeah, so you can put objective items into this Warthog, which it's not just a troop hog. It, 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 it looks tougher, and it might be faster. Can't confirm that yet, but it's, uh, it's the Razorback. Some people are reminding me. I know it's the Razorback. It's called the Razorback. But it's it's it adds a fundamental purpose to the sandbox. You know, you're not going to want to get on this thing if you want to go over to the enemy team and start spawn killing them. You know, gutting them down and, and, and put them in a chokehold on the map. You want to grab this for purely objective or to gain control of a part of the map with your friends. Was there any blood in multiplayer? I actually don't think I saw any. By the way, if the chat is in the way, just let me know for for anything in specific. I might point out something then, then. cuz I'm not even looking at the chat, obviously I'm looking at the raw video, but um could the flag go in the Razorback storage? Yes, they confirmed that equipment or uh, objective items could could be placed in the back there. So as you can see right there, I think that's actually the flag in the back. Yeah, right there. Oh, okay. It's not in the back. The passenger is holding it. So there's four people in this Warthog. That's, that's the first time we've seen four people in a Warthog, right? Ever? I'm pretty sure. 
But, you know, this is Big Team Battle 2.0. This is going to have 12 versus 12 players. So if you knock out that Warthog, that's only one-third of the team, not half of the team. So, yes, it looks like you can put the flag in the back of the hog, yeah. But uh, this guy's got a weapon. He's charging up. I'm not quite... Oh, he, he's using some kind of... Interesting. But we do see the chopper there. I have to point out the chopper because the chopper is absolutely beautiful. And I, I'm not crazy about the skin, but thank God we know that there's going to be a lot of customization in this game. And look how wacky it is. It looks like it's kind of wacky like it was before. You know, like Brute's designs, especially the Banish, is kind of like this... Why it just it works, but it's kind of like crazy design, you know. I don't know really how to describe it. it's kind of tribal almost, you know. It's just this crazy mechanisms that the brutes have. By the way, guys, if you're just tuning in, um, we're breaking down the multiplayer overview. This was just released about 40 minutes, 30 minutes ago, and um, brand new gameplay here. And we're not even halfway through the analyzation of this this thing, so. Still a lot to talk about. And if you guys see anything, there's a lot more eyes on this than just my eyes. So if you see anything, let me know. I'm constantly checking the chat. And yeah. But no, I haven't seen any blood. Some people are talking about that now. Um, I didn't see any blood there. This game is going to be teen rated, you know. And right there, actually, we could see the threat. What is that called? The threat sensor. That's what it's called. So that is the grenade that we saw in yesterday's gameplay. I think maybe a little bit today, but you know, you pick this up with pressing X on the Xbox controller and then it goes into your inventory and then you can, you know, fire this grenade kind of thing out of your uh, your wrist and that probably replaces the grappling hook. Let's see, does it? I don't think he actually picked it up, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you can only have one attachment wrist attachment on at a time. So you can't have the grappling hook and the threat sensor. But that threat sensor is essentially a grenade that uh, does Promethean vision in a small area where you can see players behind walls and stuff. Which, by the way, is going to be great if you go into a base that has a flag, let's say on Valhalla, that's covered up, and you shoot a grenade in there, you can see all the players crouching down, and then you can just start grenade throwing and, and kill them all. So, really changes the game. No medals. Um, are you saying I haven't talked about the medals? Or I don't see any medals. They're, they're, they're probably still working on that. Potentially. Any flight? Yes, uh, they talked about the flight in my previous video, uh, which you can watch. Just It's called the Halo News Blowout video. But yes, there is there is uh, a pre-release technical previews confirmed. Which is flights. Yeah, it's another word for flights. Um, and here again, we have the... Um, yeah, this is this is the Valhalla like 2.0. It would it would seem full extent of the sandbox of Halo in just one match, right? Like you see the vehicles. That's a big grab lift, right? Which is really, it, it really does remind me of Valhalla. I think that's what everyone's calling Valhalla. But you know, what does armor customization like look like? Yeah, we we got a lot to break down about armor customization. What do the skills do? I'm not quite sure what I know what you're talking about there. Um, New equipment that was used to deflect plasma shot can be used as a grenade jump. New equipment that was... So you're telling me the repulsor can be used to grenade jump. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool, the if that's weapons, true. I didn't, I didn't see that, but... We really wanted to take that kind of concept, those feels you had, you know, playing the, play, the playing the previous games. Take that kind of weapon. Oh, Halo yeah, there is weapons right there. Just one match, right? Like take a look at that. Vehicles, the... New gun under chat. Wait. Look at that. There appears to be a brand new weapon right there. And it's really hard to tell what that is, but it looks like a banished weapon, honestly. Pretty sure it's a banished weapon. It could just be the shock rifle or it could be something else entirely. But there's Bones. certainly a lot more weapons we have not seen yet that they're probably just... Yeah, can you explain the battle pass? Yeah, I will try to when the time comes later in the video when they talk about it because I don't understand it. <laughs> we really wanted to take that kind of concept, those feels you had, you know, playing the play, playing the previous games and just turn the volume up. Vehicle this is such a beautiful map. And I'm hesitant to call it Valhalla 2.0 because Valhalla for me was, oh my gosh, I'm in Asia, when will it release? I'm probably going to put that guy in timeout. I have no idea. Probably November. But um, 
So, yeah, this is Those are no what we'll call Valhalla. But there is an ancient human structure down in this valley, which is pretty cool. And then we Hunger see just the smart. banished wraith. And I got to say, I'm not a huge fan of the banished vehicle so far, except for the wraith. Because that thing looks beautiful. It actually looks like a tank. That, I will say, probably looks better than most of the banished stuff we've seen so far. And... My God, that is just... I mean, these these are vehicles that we saw in Halo Wars 2, right? From an RTS perspective, up up top, right? And now that we're playing them in, in Halo, it's just kind of surreal. But Halo Wars 2 has a lot of connections into, into the game. And we actually saw that little plasma turn up here. We actually saw that there was some kind of shield there a moment ago. And if you didn't catch it, And just turn the volume up. Vehicles are no longer just... But he has like a, a shield. That looks like it turns on and off, depending if the player, if, if someone's using it. Any confirmation on assassinations? No confirmation that I've seen so far. There might be something out there, and I haven't seen it in the gameplay yet. But maybe that's something Pelicans that they want to bring out later. Them, and we have a commander in your ear telling... No, my, uh, microtransactions are confirmed. You ...that Pelicans are going to be dropping off... This is Pelican dropping off a wasp. These vehicles... Scorpion tank is inbound. We have... Halo 2 style Delta Halo mission weapon pods that fall from the sky to resupply the field. So they're they're doing this again, but I think Two this style Delta off these Halo vehicles. 2 Del Did you hear that Halo 2 Delta style weapon resupply? Tank is inbound. We have Halo 2 style Delta Halo mission weapon pods that fall from the sky to resupply the field. That's where it makes it feel like like a real battlefield and and it's very exciting. This is not so I think that's how weapons are going to respond. Like, they're not just going to appear on the map. They're going to just just be there, you know? They're just going to they're just gonna uh, just come in from pods. More players. That's, that's this pretty is cool. Just and I wonder if they're going to kill you if you're right under them. <laughs> that might kind of discourage people camping weapon spawns, you know? Maybe. Uh, how do you like the modernized gameplay? I'm late, so if you already said your thoughts. Uh, I love it. I'm, I'm excited for this. Uh, El Nini says, I was hoping for an in-game certain... player hub like Destiny. We might get something like that, but so far it doesn't look like so, uh, like we're getting that, so. Beautiful slice of sci-fi chaos. There's a rain kind of sick with this stunt there. I just kind of want to watch that again because that's really cool. But, you know, right here we get a really good understanding of how the map layout is looking. And there's a lot of the figure eight design or the uh, the infinite design, I guess. But, but anyway, they... We talked about it a lot a few months ago, or several months ago, but basically there's just a lot of different paths you can take. And really there's no dead ends anywhere, it seems. So that's really going to enhance the combat loop, designing maps like that. Did you notice that there's no medals for multi-kills? I think that's just a temporary thing. You know, there's a lot of work in progress going on right now, obviously. Or Flame Cat. The announcer is your big gameplay moments, your game modes, just like the way it was before. Play catch. Personal AI is really a reflection and information for the player. Personal AI, designation button. So if a player grabs a flag, you get your own your AI. Personal AI is going to tell you to, you know, get that thing back to base and give you some like moment to moment updates. Our team took the enemy flag. What if we can let players? I love their own the AI alarm. I love the alarm, man. I can't wait for Machinima that taking tell you to, of all this you stuff. know, get that thing back to base and give you. And they they actually Joseph Staten, of course, thank you, Joseph. But he did bring up Forge, which we'll talk about soon. There's even you know in the background, there's probably even some stuff we could look in and zoom in. It reminds me of the Halo Four or Five days, but there's just so much content here. It's not even really necessary unless. Some, like, if we do see Forge in the background the of one of these, I'm gonna just analyze it like crazy. But... Let's look at Personal this. This AI is, this is, is really a reflection and information for the player. Personal AI. Designation so if a player, it looks like you can walk around like some area. Reflection. I don't know if this is a reflection and information. This is two movement course. So this is the this was probably the academy, you know, where you get to select all your stuff. Uh, have you seen anything about hit scan or projectiles? No, but it looks good so far. Was that the prowler at 548? Uh let's take a quick glance at that. Was that the prowler? This is not just more players. This is Okay. Oh. Just Oh my gosh. What is that? Right there on the top middle. Thank you, Kuladora. 
uh, that might be the Prowler, and I really want to be surprised. If it's not the Prowler, then it's got to be some kind of modification, but that's on the top middle right there. So, yeah. I mean, and look at all these bodies, man. So many Spartan bodies. I can't wait. It's 12 versus 12 gameplay, so. A certain beautiful slice of sci-fi chaos. Yeah, a little sneak peek of the Prowler there. Thanks for that. I, I did not see that. Uh, someone said destroyed tank, destroyed banished wraith. Uh, it's a wraith, not a broken wraith. Uh, yeah. The announcer is your yeah, maybe. big. Maybe. Uh, well, we, I can look moments, at it later. But game modes, just like I would like the to way see, it was before. Personal AI is again. really a, a cool reflection and in information for the player. Personal AI. Designation button. So if a player grabs a flag, your personal AI is going to tell you to, you know, get that thing back to base and give you some like moment-to-moment -moment updates. Our team took the enemy flag. What if we can let players choose their own AI, and each one of those are different voices, so that players can find the one that fits their personality and their mood the best? They they add to the sense of like me, as a, as a Spartan, being more important. And and for us in multiplayer, it is really about becoming a Spartan. Your Spartan. So, personal AI installed, you received a personal AI, you can customize your AI's appearance and personality in the armor hall once the... That's cool, you can uh, customize the personality of your AI. And I don't know if this is really a gimmick kind of thing or if they're actually going to be helpful, but if the AI actually told you that it's like, hey, you know, there's weapons over here. This is, you know, you picked up the rocket launcher earlier. You obviously like the rocket launcher. It's going to be responding in 30 seconds. And these AIs, they could actually coordinate together and influence games, right? If the all, all the AIs are saying, hey, rocket launcher at this point, go, go, go. It's responding in 25 seconds. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to be nuts. It's going to be absolutely nuts, especially if there's like a, a waypoint that says, go here. So there's actually talks about Battle Royale at some point. I think some people were saying in the chat, so we'll, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And we got a lot of customization stuff to, to talk about soon. You are you inside of the Halo universe. The body of customization content that we... All right, so right off the bat, uh, these are the names of the armors, but it looks like we can add chest attachments now. We can, as yesterday we learned... You can configure your gloves, which are going to be something that you can directly see in the gameplay. You know, unlike most customization stuff that you, you rarely see in Halo games. The changing of your wrist, maybe the top, this little top part of your hands will be customizable as well. I want, really wouldn't be surprised. This is a free-to-play game, and they're depending a lot on this kind of stuff. So, they only said BR short for Battle Rifle. Yeah, I guess maybe someone must was mistaken i don't know but we'll, we'll get to the point though but uh i would be pretty shocked if they did talk about battle royale which is why i'm like what we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization combinations for spartans on the battlefield that includes My things God, like that is armor customization combination for i mean you can you spartans can edit on. virtually any part of your spartan right this is field that what includes things like as far as armor coatings uh, armor emblems various armor effects down to the individual armor pieces so you look at that that's just gorgeous this your armor everything gloves, looks so your gorgeous knee pads, your you know i know that it's not crisis or you know one of these like a uh, red dead 2 graphics but this is this is what i've seen for you know just needs better lighting better graphics you know nice polish which this is this is it and this is probably the best that halo is going to look for for the next 10 years you know it's but i'm fine with it i mean this looks like csgo almost i don't know if anyone else is thinking that it looks kind of this map kind of look reminds me of csgo but you know csgo i think was was one of the biggest arena games well it's, it's pretty different than halo but it is in that kind of genre i think i would love to see a csgo kind of mode and it's basically one life, you know, per round, but, uh, yeah, anyway. Helmet, your visor, your helmet attachments, then you look at weapons, and we've got a whole slew of customization. Now, look at this. I, I really wanted to pause at this 40 minutes ago, 50 minutes ago when we first saw this, but... So, this is the, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and hide the chat for a little bit, just so everyone can see what's going on here completely, but... 
yeah, there, uh, there's a lot to talk about here. So on the very top layer, we see play, customize, community, shop, right? Microtransactions are lurking in the customization menu. Not a surprise at all. But we can see a few other sub options here, sub menu options. Armor hall on the left side here. Weapons bench, vehicle bay, body and AI, and presentation. Presentation has probably got something to do with like your pose and how your Spartan looks maybe in multiplayer matches or maybe that might be executions and stuff. But let's talk about Armor Hall. That's, that's obviously going to be the place that you go to to customize your Spartan, which is what this whole room is. I forgot the, the name of this whole room, but just as we thought that this was uh, going to be a big... Big room dedicated to all your vehicles. By the way, the forklift is in the background. I uh, top top right. I find that interesting that it's next to the warthogs and that this is the room of the customization options. Are we gonna be able to buy skins for our forklift? Anyway, weapons bench. Weapons bench is what we're. I think we're probably gonna be looking at right now, right? I mean, that's where you're gonna be able to customize the appearance of your weapons and maybe attach some cosmetic only attachments to your weapon vehicle bay is probably going to be the skins and where you're going to be able to customize your vehicles and maybe even the the uh the meshes on your vehicle so we'll still be cosmetic but maybe you can add like a skull on the front of your hog you know and i'm just kind of look over the comments real quick see if there's anything no okay anything an offering there uh, present body and ai is probably going to be your uh, spartan armor and your AI, or maybe just going to be the, the AI options. I don't know. But presentation is probably going to be that final look at your your Spartan and your... Um, or maybe just maybe just observing your Spartan and stuff. Yeah, maybe it's not very... It's, yeah. Anyway. Vehicles have a, have a weapon, gloves, let's, let's your knee pads, quick, your I'll helmet, your visor, your helmet attachments. Then you look at weapons, and we've got a whole slew of customization offerings there. Vehicles have a have a huge pool of customizations too. We support customization in the game. Players can do the same thing on HaloWaypoint.com as well as the Halo Waypoint app. The player also customizes the Spartan, the soldier inside the suit. We want the Spartan to represent the player as much as possible. They can change their body type and their voice. Okay, so there's a, a bit I wanna I don't wanna fall back too far behind on this. So we'll just Vehicles. So this is the vehicle room probably going to be able to select your vehicle and it'll it'll appear here and then you'll be able to customize i think virtually any vehicle in the game right and i really want to get a different chopper skin because i don't like the default one but do you think oh you know what that's a really interesting comment uh by valdez he says if we can make battle royale and forge what do you think the player count will be given that btb is 24 players i think custom games will be 24 players as well that's what the game can support uh, and BTB, no reason why it shouldn't be able to support that and everything else, even though we did see a higher play count in Warzone, which was kind of testing the engine already, and we didn't see that in multiplayer and custom games. But this time will probably be different. Uh, Battle Royale with 24 players is going to be sick. Have a have a huge pool of customizations, too. We support customization in the game. Players can do the same thing on HaloWaypoint.com, as well as the Halo... So I found it kind of interesting. You can select your your armor and now take a look at this this reminds me of destiny you got legendary a legendary helmet so they're going to be colored here with a gradient and that's basically going to show how common maybe a uh, mythic or rare or legendary helmets are and unlike halo 5 where you would get them randomly we know that there's not going to be any kind of gambling F uh, things in this game so you're not going to be buying wreck crates or wreck boxes or whatever hoping to get you know your favorite armor you're going to be working for them and i think oh and it says acquire when you acquire this 12 31 2021 <laughs> but yeah i mean obviously that's a placeholder day if you don't know that's not the release day of the game but yeah it's this this whole thing is showing progression uh, an insight on progression here summary battle pass events all right, we got events, and this is how far along you are, how much XP you're getting. 
from daily challenges. We know challenges are going to be in the game, but this is our first look at challenges. And battle pass for our tomorrow. Next reward to item unlocks. So you're going to get some cool stuff with the battle pass, which will cost money. Um, this is their way of making money, I think, for at least at launch of Halo Infinite. And you're probably going to want to get that battle pass considering that, you know, multiplayer is going to be free to play. And if you want to... Halo Waypoint app. I mean, the they got to make money somehow, right? <laughs> it also customizes the spot. It's the Waypoint app. Yeah. So we're going to see that all in game. I'm just, uh, absolutely certain of that. But I don't think we see that on this Vidoc anyway. Spartan, the soldier inside the suit. We want the Spartan to represent the player as much as possible. They can change their body type and their voice. So you can change your body type and your voice. And I wonder perhaps your face underneath the Spartan. Do you think they'll add more vehicles to the sandbox? Uh, absolutely. I think we've only seen a little bit of it. And I really would not be surprised with all the reach themes that we'll, we'll see the Falcon here. But here we have prosthetics, a whole section under body and AI. Okay, that actually does confirm that this area is for your Spartan. So you'll be able to customize your Spartans. And you'll probably have different Spartans you can just load up. So you can save templates, basically. You can save, like, if you have, you know, five Spartans that you like to choose from, you can just pick whichever one that you've, you know, saved from a while ago and, and play as that Spartan, you know? Um, but we have like a whole section here for prosthetics, and you can make your entire Spartan a cyborg, apparently. Uh, as far as the legs go, I think it's only from the knee down, because that's what we saw in the gameplay yesterday. But, yeah. As well as choose prosthetics. You can change your hand. Trans radical choose. Oh, Static interesting. For the first time. Coding. So, okay, Body so type. I was actually wrong about that. It looks like what you can see here is hand, trans radical or transhumeral that's going to depend how much far up the arm is going to be prosthetic here in this area so if you want to change your hand uh your hand and your forearm or your entire arm is robotic you can do that with either arms and your leg so your foot your shin and your upper leg are all going to be prostheticable and come on i mean I don't know about you guys, but I'm <laughs> I'm gonna want to add all everything is cyborg. All right, I know Sean W is probably having a, a heyday with all this stuff, but um, I don't know if he's seen all this. He he's probably freaking out because he's he's part cyborg, but I don't think he's on right now. Otherwise, I'd be like, hey, did you see this, dude? This looks sick. Um, so we got. Cyborg Spartans now. Very cool. <gasps> Full body prosthetic robotic Spartans are pretty much confirmed here. I hope they don't put some dumb limitation on it. I think, I mean, probably not though. They want people to be able to be their own Spartans, right? So. And their voice as well as choose prosthetics for the first time. Could and look at, look at just one more time. Look at how the arm changes here as he goes up. Body type. Adding new. And their voice as this. well as choose prosthetics for the first time. Now the forearm is there. Now the f uh, upper arm is there. It's all robotic. Keeps the shoulder where it should Codings be. Coatings offer us a unique opportunity to craft some hyper-polished looks and let you express your... Yes, you'll have to pay money for armor. Selves and ways. But you don't have to do it, necessarily. You can... Someone just asked that question. I thought I would answer it. You've never been able to before. So we're coming at this from a player first mentality. So what that means is that there's no random loot in this. There's no loot boxes. It's very important to us that everyone understands exactly how they unlock customization content. And we have a variety of places where they can do that. First off is the battle pass. The Halo battle pass will never be taken away from you. And what I mean by that is once you buy it, it's yours and does not expire. In future seasons, you can purchase old okay, battle... Okay, now, that might seem like a weird statement to make. If you buy something, we're not going to take it away from you. But that sounds like, um, like, hey, we're not going to be doing what Bungie did. Because they basically... They had years and years of battle passes and DLC that they took away from players, technically. Um, I'm not fully knowledgeable about that, but basically... Yeah, it's nice. To First see off, is the battle pass that, that they're not going to invalidate the battle pass that we will probably mostly be buying. Uh, most of us will be buying when the game drops. So, yeah. 
The Halo Battle Pass will never be taken away from you. And what I mean by that is once you buy it, it's yours and does not expire. In future seasons, you can purchase old Battle Passes as well as the current Battle Pass and choose which Battle Pass to put your progression towards. All of these rewards are single source, so you're never gonna be confused about where things come from. If you can unlock something in the Battle Pass, we're not gonna let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game. All customization is- See, that's, that's, okay, so let's listen very carefully to this because this that's actually pretty relevant to uh, how microtransactions and customization is gonna work, okay? so. Just listen, let's listen to this one more time. Well, as the current battle will never be where they can do that. First off is the battle pass. The Halo battle pass will never be taken away from you. And what I mean by that is once you buy it, it's yours and does not expire. In future seasons, you can purchase old battle passes as well as the current battle pass and choose which battle pass to put your progression towards. All of these. So what he basically just said there was that you're going to be able to buy ba battle passes no matter when it is. If it's three years from now, you're going to be able to buy the the uh, Heroes of Reach battle pass, which is going to be the first one, I think. But uh, actually, that might just be Season 1 uh, content. So I'm not actually 100% sure what this battle pass is going to have, but it is going to be something that's probably going to cost like $10, $15 that's going to have a special season of sorts and um, sp special season content. And that's going to be, uh, I think, earned. You can earn that in the game, but only through the battle pass. Uh, so you're still going to have to you're going to have to pay for it and work for it. I think. Is the current battle pass and choose which battle pass to put your progression towards. Put your progression towards. So whenever you're playing the game, when do you where do you want to put your progression towards? When you're playing the game, how do, where do you want to um, put your experience towards? Right earning stuff all of these rewards are single source so you're never going to be confused about where things come from if you can unlock something in the battle pass we're not going to let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront a lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game all customization is just cosmetic every season will have its own theme and introduce new components new looks new gameplay for players new opportunities to earn and collect cool rewards we've seen the the samurai already. that is so that's cool. one of our event armor cores that is so cool new components new playing the game all customization is just cosmetic so all customization is just cosmetic every season will have its own theme and introduce new components new looks new gameplay can we have a cyborg head oh we do have a super chat here coon says academy has chances to bring joint military exercises with swords of san kilios meaning elites returning do have chances later on in some season yeah potentially and maybe some special mode or some casual mode, it would be a, a good time to put that in. I think if there's enough outcry for it, I think it would happen. So, guys, get ready to sign my petition. I might just make one. <laughs> Play for players, new opportunities to earn and collect cool rewards. We've seen the... the they're they're, they're, they're going to treat this game like MCC on steroids. You know, this is going to have... They're going to have content rolling out, you know, just months after the launch. Uh, probably much sooner than that but like little like seasons are gonna be pro probably gonna cost money like an mcc where everything's free but that's just really exciting you know i'm, I'm really looking forward to it i think they have a pretty standard it, it looks like it's a completely different game than fortnite obviously obviously uh but as far as the microtransactions are going it looks like they're probably going to do something pretty similar to that and destiny so the f which i i i like it um Oh, Jairus Under just hit, uh, he just said something. How, how am I liking it? I, uh, uh, what? The mult, everything? I love everything so far, pretty much. I think Halo's back. I think this is, right here, this is the armor that I'm like, okay, are we getting a little bit ridiculous now? But that's just one side of me because I've just been exposed to such crap armor like you guys, like from Halo 5. But there's nothing that really rings as being, like, stupid about this to me. I like this armor. I, it, it looks like Spartan armor, but at the same time, it, it looks like a samurai. So it's, it's done in this kind of thoughtful way of blending the two aesthetics together. 
that looks like some real legendary reach stuff and this is a part of the event or some some big event so let's let's listen to that again actually new opportunities to earn and collect cool rewards we've seen the the samurai already that's one of our event samurai. armor cores and that's going to be something that players one can of our event and oh my god ah! oh my god the katana the katana my dudes oh my god <coughs> the katana has returned and if you don't see it, it's on his belt. Oh my god. Bruh. Bruh. That's one of our event it's armor so wars. wait, okay, that's and not that's a katana. Some... Oh my god. That got me excited, but man, that's pretty close. That that's a, a very short blade. But man, I mean, are we close to seeing a katana? Katana knife. Katana knife. It's a Tonto. So I, I don't know the name of the specific blade, but the, the fact that there's a samurai knife or blade on his armor is really cool. There might be another blade that we can put around because 343 is obviously doing a lot of callouts to, you know, older armors, older generations and, and, and Halo customization and, and like obviously with the Reach armor design we have here, but uh, in the art style, of course. But one big thing with Halo 3 was that katana, and that was just so cool on a Spartan, you know? Um, like in my Halo Reach series, I got I got Sam. He's going to be having a, a sword throughout the story, and I think that's just so cool when Spartans get their hands on swords because, man, they can really mess people up with this. And will this be a part of an execution? Right? Uh, so we actually have a super chat here. Uh uh, Agni Kai says, obviously it's not perfect, but nothing is perfect. Halo fans need to lower their expectations. Game looks great. Yeah, I lowered my expectations a thing that lot. Players can earn and I'm happy. And through gameplay for free. Now that, that's, I'm not saying that this game is so bad that my expectations that are so low, it's like awesome. But, you know, you know, if you watched yesterday, I was very reserved and uh, I'm not, I'm not pretending to be any more hyped than I really am. I'm just... I'm just, I, I want to see Halo return, and this is this is better than Halo 4 and 5 so far, by far. It's new gameplay for can, players. You can really tell that they've learned a lot, too, you know, about what, what this, what everything means to people. You know, what Master Chief means to people, what armor customization means to people, what playing classic Halo gameplay with sandbox items laying around the map to be fought over and to be competed over and to have advantage or disadvantages on that part of the map or this part of the map is all super important. You know, Halo 5 was a jungle gym of, um, I, it just, the flow of it sucked ass, dude. In my opinion, I think it sucked, but this, this looks really cool. Gameplay for free. Let's move on with us going free to play for the multiplayer part of the game, like that was a big goal because, you know, how do we have a way we can always bring players in, right? And they can, when we have a new update there, there's, they'll just dip their toes in if they even just want to see it. Not only are we free to play, but we're free to play on PC as well as console. And what that means is we're able to get the biggest audience we've ever had. I mean, everybody gets to play with no barriers. And even better, your progression carries from one platform to the next. Getting our game to be on PC and console at the same time is an amazing chance for us to really just kind of excite new players about the game. How can we do things like make mod tools play interesting and like even in just customs being able to just so play that's with your another massive and... thing is that cross play and cross progression is confirmed. So if you want to play on your Xbox Series X um, with your friends on the Xbox One, that's possible. I'm pretty sure, but they did say cross play across all platforms is, is there. So you know between PC, your friends are on PC, you're on Xbox Series X, you're going to be able to play together, and you're going to be able to switch between the two on your profile and have no restarting of your progression it's, it's all on the same system which is is pretty neat like some people have pcs and some people have consoles and like let them talk to each other let them be friends yeah exactly and that's something that i wish sony would learn too is that people want to play together but resin says i miss when you could earn everything in a game at any time i'm not against limited time events but stuff like battle plat passes turn me off yeah, I mean, but, you know, I'm thinking that they need to do more than just have armor. That might make them money, of course, but I think they need the 
they need some bulk payments, you know, um, because they're investing a lot of resource. I'm not, I'm not going to be like, look, Microsoft needs some money or anything, but I'm just talking about from a, a money perspective. Look, if we just, I don't agree with it, but I'm just saying if a game doesn't make any money at launch, then the franchise might not die, but it's going to get less of a budget next time around. So that's my thinking of it. And that's why they're invested six years of their time into this game because Halo 5, uh, I think its sales were actually really low, but you know, that's a whole controversial thing I don't want to get into again, honestly. But yeah. Um, anyway, thank you for the super chat there, Resin. It's a series of experiences. So now we're we're gonna be talking about the uh, the training arena, which I feel like most of us really don't feel like we need. But maybe these bots are gonna give us some some value as far as <laughs> I don't know training. Uh, what are they? I mean, what kind of ridiculous crap can we do with bots? All right, they're confirmed, which we'll, we're about to be getting into. But I'm just thinking about mods being able to. They're probably they're gonna cap it off. I bet at like eight bots right per game. But man, I bet I bet this engine could handle way more. It might be a little glitchy at times, but I'm just waiting for mods, man. I want to fight a thousand bots on on an endless map, you know. And maybe all the bots. Oh my god, all the bots should have energy swords, and they're just like running through, and it's just you and your friends running a horde mode. Yeah, <laughs> there's so much you can do with basic AI, and the fact that these maps have, uh are AI compatible is massive because it, it heavily implies that all AR, AI are going to work on this. And maybe not many of you know this, but a lot of modders have had trouble with Halo Reach specifically. Halo 3 was, it looked like the AI were very compatible with most of Halo 3's multiplayer maps, but the AI were struggling in Halo Reach because they didn't have the right node set up behind the engine um, or de originally developed in the engine, which we have never had access to. And I think they should finally give us access to. But yeah, I want to see the Blame engine released to the public like the Source source engine like from Valve. Both a tutorial to get started for Let's restart picking this. up the controls and also people who want to warm up before they head into matchmaking it's a series of experiences both a tutorial to get started for the first time weapon drills to practice with specific items and also training mode that you can use to just get warm explore the game as you want to for so players my, who are new my, to halo let's help them one, learn what this universe is my one complaint about this real quick guys is the ai i don't like the presentation of the ai because it looks like they're just running around in circles and specific items and also training mode. like these ai um, are like literally target practice i want to see real to just ai firing back in you know so i like the target practice so that's funny that there's <laughs> press y to jump is that what i hope that's not the button you press anyway Form, explore the game as you want to so killed ryan Rhino X2077 killed 343 Frenchie. I wonder why it's labeled 343 Frenchie. Is that what AI practices is just killing bots named 343 something? Maybe they're based on their play style. Like maybe kind of like uh, the Amiibos from Nintendo Switch where if you play enough, the, the engine will kind of like learn how you play and then mimic that behavior. So maybe we might see something like a ghost competitive scene so like a uh, professional players can uh, play a bunch of games and this the slip space engine can learn how that player plays which weapons they tend to go towards and um, and then com combine that with more scripting and complex stuff that can basically imitate them playing which could be very interesting and uh, if you have I mean you could maybe load in specific players like uh, via file share you know just 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 some thoughts but uh, yeah for players who are new to Halo, let's help them learn what this universe is about. Some of these characters, what, what are they about? And help them kind of know the vocabulary that people have been speaking for now almost 20 years so that we, when they come in there, they don't feel like they're behind everyone else. They can kind of come in on an even footing. I mean, I'm really? super I mean, How good are these bots? Because I don't know about y'all, but every time I play MCC, uh, I detect a lot of sweat. Uh, people are trying and that people have a lot of experience playing Halo. So, I don't know. Are these bots really going to give the younglings an equal chance 
in multiplayer. I don't know. I mean, if this game does well at launch, it really gets a lot of people invested into it. There's going to be a lot of people that don't know what they're doing that are going to be incompetent. You know, um, I don't mean to be mean, but that's just there's just not going to be up to snuff. One of the guys talking is called French Couladora. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, oh, yeah, I uh, was a Tom French, I guess. Yeah, that kind of makes sense, I guess. But I don't bots. know why the bots. I think they're them. awesome. Our goal with bots has been to. OK, 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 OK. Here we go. So when you're in the game, I mean, I'm super jazzed about bots. I think they're awesome. Our goal. With yeah, you do, because you designed this whole mode, didn't you? She did. So this is training mode. This is academy. You're going to be able to add bots into your game. And we're, I'm going to take off. I'm going to take off the overlay real quick. Streams are popping off. Streams are popping off. What do you mean? Can you guys hear me fine and see everything fine and hear everything fine? I don't know. Jerry Sonder, why don't you message me on Discord? Uh, anyway, yeah, so we got primary weapons for the bot, secondary weapons. Um, you can really make them have anything, it appears. And you can add friendly bots and enemy bots, of course. Bot difficulty, it looks like you're going to... <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they just took the AI... Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for letting me know. The stream's good. Um, so it looks like we're going to be able to take the AI and, uh, and or maybe they're taking the Marine and banished AI seeing the campaign and just kind of putting it onto the Spartans. And, I mean, every, every AI behaves differently, so I wonder what they're going to be. Maybe the Spartans have a special AI script. Probably. Most likely, of course. And are they going to behave actually like real multiplayer people do you know like real professional players or casual you know so intermediate players are going to play because there's usually a lot of jumping they're strafing are these spartans and bots going to be strafing are they going to be uh you know jumping and uh running around walls when they get injured and, and and grenade trapping you know there's a lot of complexities that go into multiplayer um for the love of the foreigner i Hope they don't turn my boy into an MMO. Anyway, great content. Keep it up. Uh, Al Kylie says, Blood Fallen. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. I don't think so. But let's look at these options real quick. Thank you for the super chat. A variety of different. But I think it's actually capped off at eight bots in a game. So let's just take a closer look at that real quick. They're awesome. Our goal with bots is. Yeah, so wait. No, no, no. So it's very subtle, but there's actually a line right here that implies that there's more. To... That kind of implies awesome. that there's going to be at least four. Our goal with bots has been to... So I could still be right where there's eight bots capped off on the game. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to turn, turn back on the, um, the stream chat. Ooh. Bot difficulty, though. I wonder how hard these bots are really going to get. Imagine a Craig mod. 100 Craigs versus Marines. Um, yeah, are the... Uh, I actually like this comment by Jaden here. It says, Think we'll see the Golden Age Halo levels of enthusiasm and population for this game. Yeah, I think really it's really simple. They fix the sandbox. Um, there's really not many reasons it shouldn't. Uh, unless they do a massive blunder again. Um... I think this is a great, well, MCC was a great foundation for, for this kind of stuff. So let's let's keep going. A variety. Of and look, this is another. This is more bot gameplay, and I don't like this bot. Literally, just runs into it, which is when I first watched this, I was like, really? These are the bots we're going to be fighting? Because that doesn't look very fun, to be honest. It just looks like we're poning these bots. If these are in fact bots, but this is the uh, this is the island map, and I actually kind of want to probably talk about the screenshots. Uh, we got new screenshots. By the way, my God, the scenery, the skybox looks beautiful. It's it's possible that this mod, sorry, this map might be rotating or moving across this platform based on another image that we saw on on Halo Waypoint. Um, let me see actually if there's any no no new articles from what I can tell, but.
difficulties that kind of provide a good training partner for wherever you're at in the experience. Partnering with our players on the road to launch and after launch is absolutely critical, right? I mean, Halo's always been about the community conversation. We want to make sure we hear our players, make changes where we can based on that feedback, make sure the game is ready for launch, and then even beyond launch. What I'm genuinely excited about is taking the game out of our hands and putting it into the community. There we go. Hands. You See, know, whether okay. it's seeing what people make in Forge. This is, this is what I found so frustrating for such a long, long time about Halo 4 and 5 is that it seemed really much like this is our vision and you're going to like it. This is our vision and you're going to like it. That was like 343's motto back with Halo 4 and 5. And I mean, maybe Halo 5's Forge kind of went away against that motto but i feel like and then here we have a mention of forge which is one of our few very few references to forge which is exciting and the fact that we're looking at this map and i wonder how you know because we know bots are going to be added into custom games um how are they going to operate and and uh i mean how smart are these ais really because halo's notoriously had terrible ais so um, how are they going to operate on forge maps? You know, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of verticality and wild things that can be done. And are they just going to run off the map and die, or are they going to be programmable? And are we going to see actual AI and map development and customization tools for the community? But I like that he's talking about forge while showing this, and and I might be super hopeful here. I know this is the academy map, the but there are some hands. There are some little things here that makes me think that this could be a forgeable arena here or at least looking at some objects maybe this is like one of the like part of forge world but it's been developed in the actual official engine tools but you know um you know i i was actually talking to infinite forges and um and he got me thinking that maybe uh, uh i think what he said uh, or suggested that Forge maps are kind of a thing of the past, and instead we're just going to get an empty void uh, that um, now I'm adding stuff, basically. But, you know, it's just going to be a massive open grid arena map, probably all gray or black, and then we're going to be able to change the skybox. Kind of like what we saw in Halo Online Forge, which was actually incredibly revolutionary. Um, so, yeah, um, <laughs> uh, a lot... Uh, Al Kali is back again. He says another one. Forge here. We have. Oh, we go if we scream that we want modding tools too loud enough. Three for three will cave. And I think that's what they're already doing for MCC, which is uh, almost equally exciting to Halo Infinite at this point. You know, whether it's seeing what people make in Forge or the content that they're able to create with theater, watching streamers go after the game. To get involved, you go to HaloInsider.com. Put in your info with your gamer tag and we should be able to reach out to you if we want to invite you to a Halo Infinite flight. So be sure to sign up for the Halo Insider program, guys, if you haven't already. Um, you will probably regret it once you see your friends playing uh, Halo Infinite, right? <laughs> we feel like we've got a pretty good selection at launch and what's going to be there for our fans. And this isn't going to be something that is just a static set of items. We have some new stuff in the works already and just can't wait to really get into that uh, as soon as this game comes out. New maps, new modes, new ways to customize your Spartan. Launch is just the beginning. Now we're just gonna be able to talk, interact more frequently. And that's just gonna be great. That is the future of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Thank you to the community for all their feedback over the years so far. And uh, I'm looking forward to the road to launch, launch yeah. itself and beyond. And then we get the last kind of uh, finale bit. To the road to launch, right launch itself and beyond. So this is, you know, it's going to be a live service game. I think someone was talking about, will time of day be changeable in custom games? Um, probably. You know, uh, time of day is a big feature in campaign. Um, it's a lot of time and effort that they put into it. I, I, I really hope that Forge is playable at launch, unlike it was in Halo 5. Um, uh, Kula, Dora, has got back again. Thank you for the super chat, man. Uh, bots may only be for killing game types like Slayer. Uh, but even then, my dude, like, how is it going to actually function? Because there's a lot of custom games that are set up on Slayer, like that one mode, like Monster Trucks, where you push other players off the map. Uh, can we put in some, you know, some light coding, you know, like we did in Halo 5, to influence what these bots do so that they 
they are compatible with game mode. So they're not just shooting players and not playing by the rules. And even if they don't, how fun will it be to have, like... I mean, it's probably going to be pretty dynamic in custom games if you can have these players, you know. Um, or if you can play your custom games when you just have, like, three or four people, if the AIs know what to do, then you you got a full lobby until other people join and take these bots away. So I think this is a feature that's been needed for a long time to be in the game, and, and it's finally here. I don't want bots and multiplayer. It's just a way for the enemies to farm kills on e easy targets, especially if they... If you get anything like ordnance drops, like in Halo 4, I I don't think there will be something like that. But will there be a bigger game type, like 24 versus 24 players? Um, I uh, don't think so. I think it's just 24 players total. So it's just 12 versus 12. That looks like the big, big thing that we have to look forward to, right? It's just 12 versus 12. And this player doesn't fly like he did in the other uh, that we saw yesterday. But, you know, when, when the player hit the other player with Launch the skull, he went flying. So maybe you can do some charge up or some kind of animation to kind of gloat that you have the skull, which would be pretty cool. There's there's a lot there's a lot of things you can do to Halo gameplay, I think, without breaking it. And, and it looks like they're really exploring those things. Ooh, so we saw that in real time, like the uh, the repulsor, I think it was, right there. But uh, yeah, so we have the ghost here, the banished ghost. Actually looks very, very beautiful. Um, I don't have to say, this is this is cool. This is this is Halo gameplay, you know? I, 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 uh, it's beautiful, man. I mean, I like to see this map on a few different weathers and times of day and, and maybe even different seasons, you know? Um, Maybe even a map where it's all, all all on fire at night would be really cool, you know? And so, you know, we just got a bunch of cutaways of things. Oh, and right there, it pretty much confirms something that's been uh, in most Halo games, which is if your flag is away, you can't score your own flag. So, which you can see in the text. It might be kind of hard to see on the stream, but uh, yeah. Anyway, not much new stuff to say about Deeds. I do kind of want to see what happens. And then, wait. What? Yo, what was that? Bro. Wait, is that... What? Wait, that's the grenade, isn't it? Did someone else throw that? I think someone else threw that. Because he... That looks like the repulsor. But also at the same time, it goes flying. And that's... That looks like the repulsor. I might be wrong about that. I might have to go look at the other screenshot. Do y'all... The shot grenade, yeah. Or uh, the gravity grenade... When was, what was that shock grenade? Yeah. I mean, obviously it's some kind of one of the shock weapons. Did you see the snowy map mountains on the last map? I did. Are you talking about Valhalla 2.0? Because, or 3.0? Well, I guess that would be Blood Gulch 3.0. But yeah, I guess there is only one Valhalla. Well, no, there was Ragnarok actually from Halo 4. It's a grenade someone else threw. Yeah, okay. That was uh, pretty confusing. Oh, and we already see its effects before. Okay, so this is the shot grenade that we saw only once before in the campaign reveal last year during one of the trailers. And this looks like it stuns enemies or slows them down. But it's really hard to see what hap what's its full effects are because this guy dies right after it touches him um, due to the bulldog. But it looks like here for a moment... No, he see, he's already dying, so it's unfortunate that we can't see what the effect that this grenade has on other players and multiplayer. There is this other guy here, which, take note of the outline. Grenade is so bouncy, and I love it. I love Halo's physics are so cool. So cool. Um, we got a, super, a few super chats here. 
If you look at 048 of the multiplayer reveal yesterday versus 1206 today, there's a difference in the crosshairs for BR. Maybe custom crosshairs. That's very interesting. Uh, thank you, Loki's Zoomer. Uh, um, I appreciate the super chats. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it's custom crosshairs. That's that's pretty cool. Um, he says that 1206 in today's video, which is coming up here in a second. Oh no! I clicked away. Different cross or custom crosshairs. Uh, they definitely have alluded to stuff like that. This looks like the skewer. I love the asymmetrical uh, zoom here, which is not aimed down sights, by the way. But this is a legitimate zoom, and this is the harpoon weapon, aka the skewer. Oh, man, look at that thing. Oh, my God. Now, 343, three, if you're watching this, can you please make it harpoon straight? Like, I'm talking about like a 30-foot fly because how cool would it be if there was a player like up here, you shot him with a skewer, and he just got, you know, harpooned to the wall, crucified on the wall. How awesome would that be? All right. Let's, let's catch up with these Super Chats. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for tuning in, um, for watching this stream with me. We still got some time left, um, but we got a lot of Super Chats I'm trying to catch up on now. So last one, I promise. So, uh, so far, I like how 343 is both adding to Halo whilst trying to keep the same Halo style. Sending good vibes in the chat. Thank you, Al, uh, Al, Al Kali Bloodfall. Right now is not a good time. I still haven't even had breakfast yet. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much for the super chats. I really do appreciate it, you guys. Um, there's quite a few. I'm, I, I think I'm going to just keep the video rolling away while we're looking at these. Uh, ja Yoon Ark says, I'm worried about paid for Battle Pass. Yeah, I am too a little bit, man. But, you know, I think this, in a way, is kind of a buffer between ruining everything about customization. If they have some big Battle Pass uh, purchases that we can make instead of just a completely over over monetized customization system this is this is a good compromise in my opinion i had it the other way around 1206 yesterday and then 048 today okay so but so this is the crosshair we have right now um he said 048 uh today um i don't see anything there uh or do you mean um 048 huh I don't see anything at 048 but I will I will touch upon that later uh low key zoomer because um I am kind of curious about custom crosshairs as well uh did he repel the grenade or power drown that thing away from him with the equipment um that is a good question um this is something I'm probably gonna have to sit down by myself so we're not all having to sit here and really I think this was just a bad use of his equipment honestly because I don't really see anything changing or changing with what's already happening here maybe he did reflect it away from him maybe that was actually maybe you know what you know another thing is that when we used fire grenades and any grenade in Halo they're not you can kill your friends with them, right? You can kill your friends with a fire grenade in Halo 3 or a spike grenade in Halo 3. But what's stopping this grenade in Halo Infinite to hurting allies, right? This could have been thrown by an ally that was starting to hurt this player here. Maybe. Probably not. I don't really... Well, there is a little damage, but that's probably from this player. But yeah, I want to watch the skewer again do that. That looks like it hurt. I mean, he literally just got impaled by this harpoon, dude. My God, can I get can I get harpoon army in the chat? Who wants to see the skewer have a little bit more of a harpoon effect? Impel them a little bit more onto the wall, dude. My God, Elias got a. Uh, Guzman3, thank you so much for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to uh, say anything you want to in the chat um, if you're going to be doing a super chat anyway. Um, yeah, so that is cool. Let's keep going. 
Oh, and look at that nice BR skin. Very beautiful, very sexy. I might might want to pause it on it just so everyone can see it. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's uh, very clean. I love the art style. It's uh, really translating well to what what I wanted and what I think most people wanted here, you know, so it's good job, 343. Three. This is a snowy map, by the way. We thought it was going to be all snowy, but this is uh, obviously Academy, right? Again, we've seen this a lot. Academy, um, well, Avery J. Johnson, Academy of Military Science. So obviously a facility that's kind of meant to uh, be in honor of Sergeant Johnson. But let's take a look at this. This is the skull, man. This is That's a pretty cool skull. What do you guys think about that? Harpoon, harpoon, harpoon. We got a lot of harpoon army here. Uh, right there we could see active camo. Pick up active camo with X. Once again, X seems to be the uh, default controller for for picking up equipment items. And also over here, we see a couple grenades floating. Two grenades floating together on what, what looks like a weapon lift or weapon holder. That guy just got pwned. And by the way, when's the last Halo game that has bananas and watermelon and mangoes in it? Huh? Have you ever seen bananas, watermelon, and mangoes in a Halo game? And a Spartan getting thrown against crates? I mean, do these crates react to this Spartan getting pwned? They do! I mean, given the meshes are kind of crashing into each other, but that's cool. You can actually see the prosthetic arm when he's holding the skull. Yeah, uh, is that the prosthetic arm? I don't think it is, unless he's talking about another player. But... I noticed a flag with the the guy with the flag didn't have the pistol, so no more pistols while holding the flag. Yeah, that is something I'm looking forward to. I think that kind of <laughs> ruined the whole point of. And I hated how you kind of let go of the flag. I don't know why they that that took away sandbox value in my opinion. It it just it's just dumb, a dumb idea, uh, to be honest. Uh, Connor Story says, "Do you like the yellow shell animation when you break armor?" Uh, I do. I think it should be toned down a little bit because that's a little bit absurd. I mean, look at that. That doesn't really look that great to me. Although it is only for like half a second. But yeah, we got the rag doll back. We got... I, I, I hope to see more dynamic, dynamic animations like that one... You know what? I just want to show it to you guys real quick because it's just that cool. I don't think we'll ever see this... Uh, shooting I forgot I forgot what it's called yeah when you reload a little too hard I just want to take I want to take a quick look at this because look at this this is not Halo 3 gameplay this is an animation all right believe it or not but like look at this this is what when I was thinking about Halo Infinite I was like oh you know can we get look at this red Spartan in the middle look how he moves okay this is something that's probably super unrealistic to hope for Halo one day but look at this animation Look at how this Spartan moves. It's so dynamic. Again, it's an animation, not a video game. But man, can you imagine if 343 incorporated uh, these kind of physics to existing animations and they would change and have a whole different branch, like tons of branches of animations that would react based on what your movement was. Um, I think it's possible, and I know game, games are starting to do this more, especially with Unreal 5, but look how the Spartan kind of fell over when he decided to start strafing left. And, man, it actually would affect gameplay, too, if we saw stuff like this. Um, so we actually, I think we have a, a couple Super Chats. Uh, but, yeah, thank you for the Super Chat there, dude. Uh, and then Joe says, I hope Halo Infinite doesn't get the team rating I hope it's rated mature. What's your opinion? We might get two. We might get two. We might get two ratings. One for the campaign might be mature, and then teen rated for the for the um, you know multiplayer. Uh, this footage is from uh, this dude Hyper. Um, I can go ahead and post that in the chat. But yeah, uh, this is not Halo gameplay. It's not official Halo gameplay. It's just um just an animation but uh oops yeah so let's take a look at this 
Did you see the smart scope? I yeah, we did see we did see a little bit of that earlier uh, with the needler uh, kind of zooming in a little bit. But yeah, there's the final shot um, with the gravity hammer, and yeah, I kind of want to watch this whole segment over again, just in real time with audio. Martin launches just the beginning. Now we're just going to be able to talk, interact more frequently, and that's just going to be great. That is the future of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Thank you to the community for all their feedback over the years so far, and uh, I'm looking forward to the Road to launch, launch itself, and beyond. Oh, the grappling hook with the uh, gravity hammer. There's so many cool things you can do, and I, I'm, I'm genuinely hyped out of my mind for this, guys. Um, we'll probably, I'll probably be kind of doing a, a just a Q and A here. But that was, that was uh, the, the breakdown, a full, thorough breakdown. And this video will be available on my channel, uh, so you can watch the full breakdown if you have the time. Yes. Yes, I did just spend almost two hours breaking down a 13-minute Vidoc. Uh, I don't care. Uh, if you don't like it, you can suck it because I love doing full-on breakdowns, all right? Going in depth, all right? This is fun. And thank you guys so much for all the super chats and interactivity in the comment section or live chat. Can't read every single one. There's just been so much stuff to talk about. Um, so Thursday, we have some something going on they're gonna be breaking down stuff more i don't know i think that might be it as far as official stuff coming relatively soon um but yeah you know what uh, i kind of wanted to while you guys are all here let's show yesterday's video and this video is going to be kind of capping off the stream but you're still going to want to stay tuned because this is uh some good stuff here and um i'll read some more comments before we do that but ubisoft is doing a similar animation by using ml to recreate mocap data yeah there's there's a lot of dynamic stuff that they can do uh in halo and i you know there, this is a live service game so there's going to be a lot of a lot of additions and we already know that more equipment is coming post launch right so yeah just some food for thought scoring will we be able to play 50 or 500 in slayer i'm not quite sure what you're talking about there noah smith but thank you for the super chat uh it will be a 24 player game a uh, big team battle um and that will be uh that'll be just 12 versus 12 you know um yeah, I'm from the South in the U.S. That's why I say y'all. But I love the word y'all because it's, uh, damn, dude. I mean, it just takes care of so much uh, language, you know? Y'all. You all. That's, that's all it is saying is you all, but it's just easier to say. The video in yesterday's reveal has a different uh, reticle from today for the BR. Yeah, we actually had a super chat said that earlier. Um, I haven't confirmed that myself and saw that, but people are saying that. So, um. Yeah, imagine grappling a player just to get gravity hammered or sorted at the last second. Yeah, uh, that would be hilarious. There's so many cool things that you can do, Mo like in this game, right? I mean, we have we've only seen a little bit of it, but imagine you know when the community gets their hands on this kind of stuff, um, it's gonna be all out craziness. You're gonna grapple hook. Zip towards a player thinking that, oh, yeah, I'm going to get them with my energy sword. And then they're going to pull out their gravity hammer and they're going to be like, oh, crap. And then maybe you can detach early, which we've seen before. Uh, detach whenever you want. And then <laughs> and then you're screwed anyway because the guy's going to jump towards you. And how funny if he had a grappling cook himself and zip towards you and was like, I'm going to get you. And then, yeah. I'm actually kind of curious. Maybe we could have someone join here and, and get about some thoughts off of. <laughs> Let's see if Sean's on. <laughs> he might be. Uh, he might be grinding out. He's probably grinding out. 
Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, just add him. Yeah. Um anyway, I guess so we're not actually going to be doing um the video quite yet. We're just going to be kind of talking more about what we saw today. Um if anyone wants to join. Yo, what's up Nethiles? How you doing? Are we live? We are. Oh, is it? Oh man, Infinite Forges. Let's see. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I'm on, I'm on my stream. That's I'm awesome. Trying, yeah, I'm trying to get some people to talk. Did you see today's video? I did see today's video, and between today's presentation and yesterday, obviously, I I don't know if I can even put into words how happy I am with Halo right now. Because you you heard some of my offline thoughts, right? Ah, uh, maybe yeah. I wasn't the best place yesterday or two days ago. But seeing Halo and 343 do this, not only does it excite me, because I'm beyond excited for Halo Infinite now. I'm very confident in this project. Yeah. Even campaign. Maybe this is going too far. Maybe this is me capping a little bit, but it just feels like Halo again. It feels like Bungie never left in a it, way. Yeah. Like just the way you describe this trailer, just the way they have this enthusiasm. I don't know. I really do think Halo Infinite's in good hands right now. We've had a very, very bumpy road to Halo Infinite's launch. Last year, really... Yeah, damper. And honestly, the negativity caught up to me at the very end. I wasn't you as excited caving. as I wanted to be. Yeah. yeah started and I was, I was caving. I really was. You could hear it offline. But right now, I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I don't even know if I can make a video. I'm just like, I can't put into words how happy I am right now. And that's yeah. something I haven't been able to say for, I would say, at least eight years. That's a feat. Yeah, that's uh, I'm I'm right there with you, dude. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've been excited about E3, but like as far as uh, I, I can't really quite remember how it, it feels like it was pseudo excitement compared to what we're getting now, like the hype. It, and I yeah, and like what I was saying yesterday, I don't know if you were uh, live with us at all. Actually, I, I think Probably actually not. maybe only Infinite. Yeah, but anyway, I think during our precast, I was like uh, pre pre E three cast, I was like so excited because I was like, oh my gosh, there is uh. <sighs> Oh my god, I lost my train of thought. Thanks, Jarius Under. God. What? Sorry. They're returning the sandbox, though. They're returning. This is what Halo Reach should have been, I guess. Is, is um, yes. Did you yes. just see the screen, the, the, the little clip on Twitter of someone pointing the repulsor down and using it and it's sending them flying up in the air? Can you send me that so I can show? Let me see if I can yeah, find yeah. that real quick. Yeah, I sent it to Dross. I'll send it to you. Yeah. yeah, give me a second. I just did a <laughs> two hour live analysis of the gameplay. That we saw today. Right. Oh, like it feels good, man. When I I just tried to describe this yesterday, but not or two days ago, but I didn't do it the best way. What I wanted from Halo Infinite is just a Halo game to imbue everything that makes Halo Halo. Not saying not to have modern touches, because clearly there are modern touches, right? But this right here just screams Halo. And even if you go back to like reveals in the past, Halo 4's multiplayer reveal, Halo 5's multiplayer reveal. What happened with those? Yeah, they, I mean, they look like Halo on the surface, but Halo 4, you're like, that's kind of like Call of Duty with these orange drops just, and stuff. Real, um, Halo 5, that looks like, you know, Titanfall, Advanced Warfare. Like, it looks like, you know, it's following those trends. Halo Infinite, this just looks like Halo. It, it's, it's the sandbox, dude. Also, did y'all see the Warthog uh, chugging around the map with uh, a wheel missing? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's like yeah, yeah. leaning on Okay, the here you go. Here's so your funny. clip. Yeah, yeah. Let's, you should definitely look at your stream. This. this is important. Yeah, I am. I am <laughs> streaming. Um, still at thirteen hundred viewers, which is insane. Let's look. Wait. So, wait. How did the guy bounce away? What happened there? It's actually he pointed his repulsor at the floor, and it bounced him in the air. Yeah. Wait, you know the saying, kind of oh my god. He, yeah. He ate up the the gravity hammer physics without dying. No, I'm, I'm, or, I think he literally used that to fly up in the air. Yeah, oh, you know the repulsor, the thing that would, like, repel the yeah, plasma yeah, yeah. pistol? Yeah, so you just pointed that at the ground because it does a little charge. So, it okay. Him. It yeah, looks like he so got what three this, kills, though. So oh, what this means, the player with the so what this means is basically... Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 oh my god, he did, he did, he did, uh, yeah, right there. It's so quick. Yeah. Bro, that's sick. Thank you for sharing that. So someone was saying that in the stream earlier, I was so confused, but... <laughs> um that's so bad so basically you just send anything that comes out can you what if you could stop a vehicle with that uh dude that's know. sick right before you get splattered Maybe like a monk? It, yeah it, yeah it. just send it back so uh i actually have a super chat <sighs> i mean you read for like 10 minutes but uh, yeah, will there be a beta yeah um thank you j rock for the super chat yes um there will be uh 
sometime soon. I think July, right? I think July is a fair so bit. So what we read, I think release, pre-release. I'm trying to actually read the actual article because they did talk about this yesterday. But yeah, so I think I cut some, one of you guys off. You can go. I'll you. probably draw. So I no, you're fine. I don't even know what I was saying. <laughs> oh, I don't know either. That's why I'm trying um, to put it so on you. So right here, pre-release. Um, how's the stream? Man. Okay. I'm just like sure. Dross. You're gonna do a video, and I can't wait to see it. But just oh, the, the physicality yeah, of Infinite. Yeah, this, there's a like, lot. That's, that's one of the cornerstones of Halo. We don't we took it I, for granted. See, I have. I so Ron. I I don't know if you knew this. But I had a scoop that I don't think really got spread out throughout the Halo the, the, throughout the Halo fandom, and it was I. This was what actually pretty much started my YouTube career was that I found this. I I discovered that um, the guy who was in charge of the Havoc engine, or not in charge, but he's one of the, like the the top guys on the Havoc engine, which is the engine that's been used since Halo Two for physics, and is like the leading physics engine that people use in video games in general, like GTA uses it, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the guy. Who who was like on top uh, on in charge of Havoc and was in charge of the engine? Uh, actually, after Havoc got bought by Microsoft in 2015, that guy the same year went on to work for 343 Industries during the time they were building the Slipspace engine. So the dude who's in charge of the industry leading physics engine is working on the engine for Halo Infinite. He's still working with wow. 343 right now. Yeah, dude, I did not know that. That was uh, that's sick. I, I, yeah. that's, that's another thing with this. I'm really hyped. Oh man, I hope we get a classic Halo 3 Warthog skin, but I yeah. am really looking forward to the skewer. <laughs> that's my favorite oh, one. Oh, yes. dude, I was trying to tell you. Okay, hear me out. Imagine you shoot somebody with the fucking skewer, right? Mm -hmm. I, I probably shouldn't swear. Um, shoot somebody with the, the skewer, right? And, um, like, it's like a corridor. There's, like, three people behind him. Oh he gets my smacked God. with a skewer, and everyone in his path just gets they splattered and destroyed. They should get and then and crucified on the wall. They should, like, be hanging yeah, on yeah, the wall. Yeah, yeah, dude, like a, little, like a literal skewer. Like a little shish kebab, a Spartan kebab. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was I, I, I started doing Harpoon Squad now, so that's my thing. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm so eager for them to tune that skewer uh, up because I want to see people get harpooned on the wall. Like, that's – even if it's just one – I don't think I don't think you can ship off because we did see a player just one player get knocked down at the end of the overview. I, yeah, he just kind of had it impaled into him and he was like, Ugh. but yeah. no, it should like Man, I want to see that guy fly again. <laughs> yeah, you want to see him go. Oh, oh my god! And just think back. about man. See, this is this is this is energy I haven't felt in a long time. Like not only from yes. me, but like from you guys I know. and everyone else. This is this is well, and, it's and that's the thing, right? The thing is, the reason why we're so excited isn't. The, and the reason, let, let me clarify it, why Halo 4 and Halo 5 didn't necessarily deliver that. It's because Halo 4 and 5 slowly saw a move away from the physics sandbox and more toward mm -hmm. the three-dimensionality of the character abilities, right? So what I mean by that is, you know, Halo 4, you can use sprint, you can arm, you can use the, the drop shield, or not the drop shield, the, 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 the hard light shield and stuff, but that yeah. doesn't improve the sandbox of the game. It doesn't actually do anything to widen the amount of things that can happen in the game. Halo 5, Spartan Charge doesn't increase the sandbox's durability. It doesn't, you know, the, the ability to, to ground pound somebody doesn't do anything for the sandbox. So the fact that this disruptor alone can deflect stuff and send things flying, you know, the fact that you can, do, like what we're talking about with the skewer, the fact that you can chip apart vehicles and things like that. All these little things take the sandbox and they enrich it, and that's what Halo has needed to have done. Yeah, and and, and what they did with uh, Halo uh, Five and Four was just sweaty and point and shoot kind of gameplay, with just like the yeah, most it was called it was laser. Yeah. yeah, and I know they added like the sticky detonator is always a good example to go back to, but um, I was just like really unentertained. Like, like okay, I get like oh my god, Halo Five was exhausting. And to witness and be just live yeah. through that, but like I, I've been begging three four three for like two years now. Please do this. Do add sandbox things. People love physics. That's what made Halo three so fun. Add equipment back. Why is everything a loadout? Why is Yo, everything got to be a loadout? It's not fun. It ruins the sandbox. Make jetpack a pickup. Make grapple hook a pickup. Imagine if everyone had pick a grapple hook. It sucks. 
Okay, I'm sorry. I'm Yo, Ron, you should you should mod me and let me bop this Larry guy. Oh, yeah. Okay, can you say something in the chat? <laughs> yeah, yeah give me a second. Yeah, um, hey, yeah. I've been uh, the chat's been a little bit wacky. We're here all tacky, There's actually. been some, uh, but uh, thank you guys here. still for tuning in. Um, had kind of a. No, we have, we have I had like three thousand viewers there for for for. for you like had four thousand at one point. 4, 000, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, we we pretty much <laughs> recapped the entire. Uh, thing already so um have you said where's silly larry oh. yeah. i did yeah uh i almost put you in timeout <laughs> <laughs> um Oops. yeah so yeah anyways guys uh if, if you're just tuning in or you've been tuning in um now we've kind of switched to the i was just gonna larry. play my video i made yesterday um which larry, has I'm a coming lot of for you larry cool i'm coming for you larry coming for you Larry gone boy, he's gonna get Thanos snapped. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, Boom, on, we go. on the left we have my friend Brendan. Uh, he's actually a, a co-writer with me on the Lost Wolves. Brendan, you haven't Hi. really said anything yet, but what's up? Hey, <laughs> you what's jumped up, in big conversation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then we have we have uh, Neth Isles, which he was the first to uh, join um, on the far right, and then Jarrus under between me and him. Um, so yeah, yeah. So Brendan, what do you have any thoughts about? Did you see yeah, today's I'm, video? I, I've seen a little bit of like bits and pieces of the multiplayer footage, and it just looks as fun as it did yesterday. Like I'm yeah. really excited now, for it. Now, me and Brennan, we I look, I, I don't I limit myself how negative I am on YouTube, even though I, I tend to go on rants a lot. Negative Nelly. But uh yeah, me and Brendan, uh hopefully you don't mind me sharing this. It's like we've been pretty negative about Halo. Um Oh yeah. You know, and I don't think you care because we talked about this last year. You were on the stream last year, I think. Um you know, I was just I'm just so happy they finally are doing something refreshingly familiar. <laughs> Dude, I so, just it feels oh, like Halo 3. Before I forget, you can maybe you can harpoon if they do the harpoon thing where you stick on the wall. Imagine getting harpooned onto a warthog, a moving warthog or a banshee. I'm How see, I'm I'm that? wondering what what the level of layering is for vehicles, or if they have actually just gone like to the next level and made it so that vehicles and and like bullets and things like that fully interact like i'm wondering if you shoot a bullet through a vehicle does the bullet go f in one side and out the other and poke a hole in the actual model you know what i mean like what how far have they gone yeah uh and i wonder so what if you shoot the skewer on a wheel does it attach to the wheel and completely mess with the physics could you drive yo, imagine so cool. okay hear There's me out so many things that could uh, add imagine if you were to skewer a warthog from the top and it impaled it into the ground and it couldn't move. Yeah, that'd be some cool shit for like Halo Missionima, you know? Wait, I'm yeah. sorry, can you say that one like more time? That. I was I was actually missing with the stream. I was saying, imagine if you come from above and impale the warthog with the skewer and it impales it into the ground and it can't move. Oh yeah, that's sick. That's a sick idea. Yeah. I, I feel like it's just going to do what the ladder, though. It's just going to blow up, probably. It's just yeah, gonna... I don't think it's going to be anything... Cr yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I think you're right. It'd be insane if it had physics like that, though. Like, that's some, like, Valve Half-Life shit, and I would be so for that. Like, that'd be <laughs> so cool. Dude, these streams are popping off, Ron. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like, ECC 3 time, you know? It's, um... Yeah. It's just... Like, the positivity around Halo is just so immense right now. Like, When's the last time we really had like this level of positivity? I mean, it feels like forever, especially after last year, right? What? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this, oh, yeah the excitement you know, you know. was oh, rather mixed. There was. Yeah, we heard you. Sorry. Um, okay. But yeah, the, the the I mean, people were concerned about the graphics and you know just all the aspects of what was going wrong. You know, um, the disappearing assets on the map, the campaign, <laughs> and and it really was not that fun looking. To be honest, you know, it just looked very. So, all the weapons were so boring. Mm, there was a concern that I saw with the fact that they didn't drop a release date here, and I think it's just because they want to do a big marketing rollout where every single little thing is its own kind of like big announcement, so they can keep hype and momentum throughout all the way leading up until release. That's probably yeah. why they haven't done its release date yet. Yeah. Um, I got to tell you, last year I looked at the game and thought, "Hmm, this looks like it needs some work." Today. No, sorry. This doesn't. This does. This looks like it could release today. You know, like it. I don't see anything objectively wrong with anything I saw. 
I feel like there's this, a on that one map. I feel like as a CS:GO mod, you know the one. Oh yeah, dude. Like I don't know what. Facility. I don't know what, dude. There's even a I door that's literally it's it's literally Dust 2's door. It's straight yeah, up. Ah, dude. It, I it's love an it. inspiration. And yeah, yeah, if if it is a throwback, it, it looks like new Mombasa, like Halo 2. <laughs> it looks like Halo yeah. 4 and 5. What are you on? I'd like to try some. I, I love. Look like I love that we're, we're getting maps that aren't metal facilities, like yeah. <laughs> completely yeah. metal facilities. Yeah. And like, I'm so sick and tired of facilities, and it's just really boring. But now we're getting big team battle maps again. We're getting outdoors again. We're getting um, yeah. non-exclusively sweaty point and shoot weapons. I mean, this is really dynamic. Um, what, if they just, yeah. what if they just announced they were just like all the multiplayer maps you've seen so far are forged? Oh, that would be crazy, oh dude. God. I know uh, <laughs> if you just would probably freak out. Um, I would freak yeah. out. I love. I remember um, we were worried that it was going to be Halo 4 and 5. Like, we were like, uh, but we were, I was also worried it was going to be too much like CE. But, like, I'm so glad that it's not. It seems like it's just this mixture of all the games, like, together. But, like, yes. it's all the good from everything. Because oh, me and Christian were so worried when we saw, like, some screenshots, like, ah, shit, are they just gonna be copying CE now? Like, are they just going back to there? Because we wanted to see something new, and that's completely not what we got, and I'm it, really it happy It just about. looks like a I modern just Halo game. noticed a cool little detail. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the gravity hammer has the banished symbol engraved onto it now. Oh. Ah. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I really, uh, prefer this gravity hammer, honestly. I mean, I haven't it's, played with did it. Did you notice it's, it's got that Halo awesome. 3 range? Yeah, it does. Yeah. <sighs> It does. I love the Wraith. By the way, this Wraith, I think, looks better than any Wraith we've ever got. Like, it, it genuinely looks better to me than it does the it's Covenant like, Wraith. It's just got Larry, this gameplay, man. Like, seriously, like... Also, oh my God, is man. it just me, it or is this, like, cool. Pelican about to land right on this pine tree here? Because that, that was... <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, it's dropping Yo, a new wasp, though. That's interesting that they decided... It's um, not clipping I really the hope, tree, though. <laughs> I hope they uh, bring in, it like... It comes down and smacked into the tree. It's like, right, we're good, we're good. It's like yeah. been glitching all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So I was saying this earlier in my stream, but it should be uh, talked about here, I think. But it's like, there's AIs, right? You can have your personal yes. AI. Change your AI personality and appearance. And I'm thinking that, man, these AIs could be so dynamic to gameplay and influence mm. all 24 players on the battlefield because uh, one AI, like, it could be have a whole algorithm set on it, but it could direct players where to go. Like, for one, if you like picking up the sniper and your sniper is, is a go-to weapon, your AI could maybe learn <laughs> that and then tell you when the sniper is up. Like, sniper up in 20 seconds. Go get it. But no other players will get that notification because they prefer the rocket launcher or they prefer mm. the warthog. And maybe it could start learning your behavior in-game and start telling you where to go when when to do things. And maybe yeah. it'll have uh, notifications um, with all players. It'll say, by the way... The scorpion's uh, going to be landing here in 30 seconds. Can you imagine the craziness that's going to happen in the next 30 seconds to get that scorpion, mm -hmm. you know? Um, <laughs> you know, put it in big control. So there's, there's a, I know they kind of did this with Halo 4 a little bit. I don't think it really was done well, but yeah, uh, I, mainly it was ordnance drops. It wasn't really like, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, it anyway. was a cool idea, but just the, 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 Kill streak stuff. It, it, it Honestly, was... guys, this whole this this guy Larry, I just got to tell you, if Larry, if you're watching, I want to go ahead and let you know, uh, I'm actually yeah. taking immense pleasure in consistently removing you from the channel because I think it's funny that you have to keep making accounts and all I have to do is like push a button. So you know, this is weird. It's really funny. Like, I just see no who's Larry. But like, even speaking uh, on the AI, like, <laughs> doesn't that just seem like a Halo innovation? Like, this isn't like something they just grab from another game, or at least I can't think of another game that does something like that. But to yeah. me, that's like a good innovation that I only could see yeah, in Halo. Like, I'm really happy about that. I was I didn't really see worried game about it I didn't not mean. being innovated, but it is. It's like an innovated, like new, fresh take on Halo. It's like a sequel like, to Halo 3. So yeah, it respects <laughs> Halo 3. And there, dude, there's even a little bit of like reach elements in here that I'm seeing. And, like, yeah, it sure. Just, it all comes together so well. Like, I, I don't know, man. I just, I can't wait to yeah. play this game. So I really it, can't. Yeah. No, the can't. reason I say it's so uniquely well. Halo is because, like, you know, Halo, you got Cortana. So it's cool you're bringing an AI into multiplayer like that. Oh, I just think dope. that's awesome. Oh, he's back. More casino. More casino. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't just... know if you guys saw this. I took some screenshots, but uh, did you notice that the BR reticle is different from yesterday to today? 
Yeah. Uh, I yeah. Had, well, I mean, it's it's all pre-release stuff, so yeah. Like, so I mean, I wonder if, be, if you can just change it or just pre-release. Custom reticles, yeah. pre-release. Custom reticles yeah. are a very custom common thing. I think. Very cool. Or uh, yeah, becoming I think more common totally in shooters. That. So give us the ability to actually customize it, though, like in a CS sense, like where you can change the dimensions of it and the colors and stuff. That's yeah, what I'd like yeah. to see. Cool, though. It's got just good for yeah. accessibility. It's got that Halo Reach yellow line stuff again. I wonder. Yeah. Did it's you guys cool, think the like BR model looked kind of weird though? Like I thought the ammo counter was a little small. Yeah. Um... It looked a little weird. The the, the scope. It did look. Small. I think it's just the the angle of the view model is is all because if you look at it yeah. compared to the other VRs, it doesn't it doesn't actually look that weird. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps. Um. This looks so cool. Like I'm just. What I, what I, the hell was that game they showed us last year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I actually I kind of want to like throw up the campaign set, although this has so far been exclusively multiplayer kind of stream, but I, I kind of want to throw up the campaign stuff at some point because uh God, that was really cool. Seeing uh I don't know. Yeah, and, and you know, last year too, I'm probably getting off topic now, but like last year I was like this is really awesome. Oh my God. Hi, pipe, pipe. But like, even in the first moments when I was reacting to it, I was already saying stuff that was concerning. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. like, like, like the, like the brutes are just, I don't know. They just looked really dumb. And I, I was what like, Halo right Halo when Halo we looked at the shot, Halo. it was supposed to be the most exciting moment for Halo Infinite ever. And my response was like, is that Minecraft? Like on stream, <laughs> I was like, "Is that Minecraft?" That was my first reaction. Yeah. It, it, did they not do a focus group where the entire focus groups were just saying, "Oh wow, holy crap, I get to see Halo." Is that Minecraft? Like they, did they probably not couldn't do the COVID. I um, remember uh, yeah. Digital Virus yeah. made a video where he like added all the Minecraft sound effects and the music, oh, yeah. like into the campaign. <laughs> yeah, it's so fucking funny. Yeah, I just think Microsoft's like, we have to show this game. You don't have any more time. <laughs> like. I think it just came down to that. With COVID, it really didn't help. If you're on the East Coast, it's one one seven o'clock right now. Oh, uh, yep. I'm I'm twelve one seven eleven seventeen. Yeah. So, uh, well, you, oh, you I think all I had a super then. chat here. Actually, let's get that taken care of. Wondering fool, thank you for the super chat. Really do appreciate it, dude. Are they going to show new campaign gameplay now that it's polished a bit more? So, I mm. think so. I think that's very likely. Uh. From yeah. what I've seen, they kind of go light on that um, up until, like, the trailers really start rolling out, which there's I, – I don't know if they've been canceled, but there's usually, you know, before C-19, there was uh, Comic-Con to look forward to, RTX to look forward to. Um, what else? Uh, there's there's birds in the multiplayer map that walk around the map. <laughs> Bro, birds. Can we shoot the birds? Are there rats? Oh my God. I want to see. Uh, there, there, there was also. I need to see Halo, Halo Infinite Man. Rat, bro. I need Halo Infinite <laughs> Rat. We need those rats, man. Yeah. Um, I oh. I think there will be a short game uh, campaign teaser. You know, like how before Halo Reach launched, I had a little campaign well, teaser. They have to reshow yeah, like the that. July reveal, right? Like they have to. Uh, I don't know. According to Jeff Grubb, they're just so focused on getting the game done, they didn't even have time to do an E3 demo. That's just the truth. And then plus, you know, it was time to show the multiplayer hey, anyways. Up, um, oh my. Hello. Hey, what's Sean, up? What is what's this, up, my dude? Uh, I set my stream. Are we still live? Are you live? I am live. Yeah. Are, are we still live? As if like I've been here. <laughs> yeah, boys, we live. Let's go. We live, oh, cool. boys. Oh wow, this is cool. Yeah. yeah what's up, guys? Happened, uh, so did you see? The, obviously, certainly you've seen today's. So what? No, dude, I missed it. I had to go out, man. Have I you? Have... You haven't seen it yet? Is okay, it... well, it's, no, it's, it's great. great. <laughs> it's uh, great. It's great. Nah, I'm just playing. Of oh. course, I saw it. What are you kidding? Oh man, I was I was about to screw with you. I was about to be like, yeah, they just uh, uh, confirmed uh, Battle Royale. Uh, yeah, oh, that might be a good one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was gonna say something from Call of Duty, but I don't know. So, what do you? What, what was Battle Royale? Reaction, Sean? A gamer <laughs> moment. What was? I Yo, think it looks... so that. Uh, okay, did anybody else see that you can throw equipment on the Razorback and think immediately about Battle Royale? Did anybody else think that? Dude, no, I thought, damn, you're just players. advertising people to, like, jump your vehicle. Like, oh, dude, but, look, they got right, but, but, power but weapons thinking, on there. Get them. Think about it, like, in a Battle Royale perspective, dude. Like, that's that sounds like a thing that you would do in a Battle Royale, 100%. Like, it sounds like they're taking elements of the sandbox and kind of compartmentalizing them and redesigning them so that they're they're a broader spectrum that could fit into 
like a battle royale experience. I'm telling you, man. I There's swear to God, this has. This to is wish. this game is uh holds more eight more players than it did before, right? So not a huge increase <laughs> before it was sixteen. Um, now it's twenty four. I wish it was way more, but eight more twenty four players means probably custom games of twenty four players, and that probably means pretty cool battle royale. I mean, it would be yeah. cool. If well, it was I mean, oh, well, listen. But... I don't. I don't know that. I, I think that the, that they decided to lock it down to twenty four for that particular mode. But I don't think it's impossible that you could yeah, still do a battle royale wanted, with a big like, player cap. Halo Five had a. Beer. You think there's going to be battle royale? I think there's definitely not. I think there's going to be. be no, I think there is going to be a battle royale. I think it's going to be not not at launch. I you think, think there's going to be a battle royale. Yeah, it'll be. Yeah, I do. Oh no way! They already said that they gave that you could probably do it in Forge. They said that like two or three years. ago. I gave. I gave up on battle royale. I was hopeful. I made a video like given all the evidence of it i don't see one maybe till like 2024 if never i, I just don't see it I, i'm just i don't, I don't think their engine can plus. handle it i think they're leaving that too well i think yeah, the fact we're gonna make it already, in forge someone already figured out how to do it in halo 5 like after years of doing the yeah, team yeah, thing. We, we played that we, that we did that championship thing yeah uh <laughs> but th yeah those were cool dudes and they figured out how to do that do that uh and and if you can do it with halo 5 to have zones that kill Easy, you yeah um Although it was like it was functioning perfectly, but it if it just had a few more oh. aesthetic changes to it, it'd be really cool. Um, if it wasn't Halo Five Forge and everything didn't look the same, that's the only problem. Is it? It all yeah. has that flat look to it, you know. Just like what somebody said in the chat, like it looked like plastic. Like yeah, just that's the. I hope they plastic. fix that problem. Yeah, I really, I, do. I agree. Yeah, uh, well, the Spartans only look less plastic, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, every look, single I thing, everything. Every like... I I combed through the entire thing and I couldn't find a frame that looked bad. I just couldn't. Yeah, dude, they yeah. all look like really nicely shaded up and like have like a lot of cool battle damage and stuff to their armor and stuff. And which is was a like, you can ask Ooh. Christian. Number one thing I was complaining about like last year was that as well because I nothing like that everything kind of looked grittier battle damage look to the characters. How... You know. Yeah, how are you supposed to believe? I really hope they fix the campaign with this, but yeah, you, you, you do have a good point there, Brennan, but uh, how are you supposed to believe that Master Chief is just, you know, and the UNSC's been defeated when there's all these ships blown up and stuff, and then there's like a warthog sitting out there, perfectly <laughs> sitting upright, undamaged, <clears throat> right off the yeah. factory. Like, it's such... Because it's a game. <laughs> well, warthogs, <laughs> I mean, if you find... Obviously, you need to find vehicles and stuff and, and weapons, but these... There was obviously some massive war that took place, and things should be beat up. Like maybe your warthog should just be found with a missing wheel. You know, um, obviously That'd it's. Cool. Oh my god! And there's so many dynamic warthog things at the to end. think about. I was thinking... the warthog with no tires. If <laughs> yeah, like so did you cool. see that? Did you see that, Sean? By the way, there was a warthog driving around. Yeah, dude, they parked the their wheel. warthog in the hood, and then it got uh, <laughs> robbed. <laughs> Just <laughs> left it on blocks, man. I was laughing. Even on Zeta, man. Even on Zeta. Even on Halo, bros are in, stealing rims. What is it? Even in Halo 4, didn't you like walk up at the beginning of the campaign when you just got on a. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, just got you on did. You flipped planet. it. Yeah, all those warthogs were bad. They were like exploded, and then you found yeah. one that was working. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there was a warthog floating in space in that campaign scene. <laughs> Somebody said hover hog in the chat. That was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Also, why was the Marine in the Warthog in space? Like, it must have been in, like, the hangar, but I don't, why was he in the Warthog? I don't know. I, I mean, the Infinity is huge. Mm. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Oh, man, y'all. Yeah, so y'all think it's the Infinity. But they have elevators. Yeah. Oh, that definitely is the Infinity, yeah. Um, this is stretching on my part, but looking at that campaign, you know, cutscene or whatever, cinematic we saw, you know, it's not like there's a bunch of wire everywhere, obviously because it's from the damaged ship. But, like, yeah, the yeah. wire to me just makes me think Flood. I, I know that's me stretching or whatever, <laughs> but, like, it almost teases Flood to me. I don't know. Ron, did you see that I, uh, <laughs> did you see that I tagged you in a picture, a picture on Twitter today? I, was, I, I just had a wire in frame. I'm like, dude, Halo Squid confirmed. <laughs> Oh, no, I did not see that. I gotta uh, check. If we're gonna get Flood, I think it'll be kind of like a big, like, hook at the end or something. Like, mm -hmm, oh, shit, mm -hmm. Flood are here. Very Halo CE. I think that's what yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, this chat is turning into a battlefield right now. Uh, uh, There's a real battle uh, royale in the chat. Heck, is Steenie meme farmer. Oh my <laughs> god, the casino guy. Realized so I was this watching this player. live when you did the this time Larry drop. Guy. God, this guy's annoying, man. Uh, yeah, no, thank you for the $10 donation, uh, Super Chat. Really do appreciate that, and uh, I'm glad. This is still live, even though now I just put on yesterday's footage. Um, I just yeah. feel like maybe it might well, be refreshing to take a look at that now. Speaking um, on multiplayer and stuff, though, 
do you guys think we will get like a really big mode or no? That's about big thing nope. about it. No, you don't Definitely think? Not. I think I, we I really saw wanted it, that big mode. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if there we is do, no, we'll get teased later. But there I mean, is this no is clearly the BTB 2.0 that they were yeah. talking about. Yeah. Yeah. BTB 2.0 from Clover. It is honestly. Is just I think battle, that the, my biggest disappointing battle. takeaway yeah. is that it's literally just it's just Warzone without that PVE. That's all it is. Like, I want, like, a 50 versus 50 mode or something. Like, you know that mode they tease in Halo 3, but they just couldn't get into the game? Of course. I thought maybe they'll go back to that. Yeah, no no major mode. 12 versus 12 is the max. Yeah. So, well, um, how about we say for that's now? Not, like, that's not a for major now. announcement by any stretch. You know what I mean? Like, just a 24-player yeah. cap, that's nothing to be excited about. We had yeah. that in Halo 5. I thought it'd be, like, 24 versus 24 at least, but no. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. I, I, I like that... I know I like that they're gonna go to the classic stuff, but maybe the engine that they're running can't run like twenty four. Well, they just completely people. built the engine. I think that's up. definitely what it is. No, that's not true. That's like a common misconception. This is this is no, not like a no. totally new engine. It's just a well, modified it is. Engine. It's they they basically no. they they grinded the the blam engine to dust and then they rebuilt it back up from the ground up. That's what they spent two years doing. Halo Infinite's development that's didn't not start what until I heard 2018, at all. until 2017. I heard that's, like, wrong. I heard Real. It's, not, it's not an all-new engine yeah, it's from the probably, ground up. Yeah, it's probably the Blame engine. Uh, they probably yeah. constructed it a lot, is what I understand. It's it probably, but, like, going from Unreal 4 to Unreal 5, something yeah, a little bit more than that. But, yeah. I just think that it, you can't do an open world and open, an expansive environment in the Blame engine, so I very seriously doubt it's the same engine. The snake on the uh, Halo that's why flag? that's why the game is delayed. That's why they're having trouble. <laughs> it's because they're the, they're pushing the right, engine but, but too hard. But the engine, that's is why still the glass door reviews are all like, <laughs> you know, like I don't think all the glass door reviews are accurate, but you know, there's definitely some stuff I in think there. Some of them are. And if you read them, they talk a lot about the engine, <laughs> the engine being part okay. of the the issue. Let me let me get over this real quick. Let me interrupt real quick. Um. Also, uh. Yeah, anyway, the, the flag on the Halo, or the, the emblem on the Halo 1 flag is uh, now back, um, which I'm showing on the yeah. screen if you guys are wondering. Um, yeah. But yeah, I thought that was really cool. And also, you can change your team color, which I also thought was really neat. Um, because it's an Oh, yeah, that's thing. a completely customizable The outline now, thing yeah. was true, apparently. So I love yeah, that I the that BR is back, oh. dude. I, I love the like BR to... being the starting weapon, man. Like, what do you guys think about that? It. Oh, I love the VR. It's, yes. like I said, classic Halo 3 yes. shit. Exactly, dude. Yes. <clears throat> Our assassination the, the, uh... Oh, look at, look at Chief's armor. Yeah, I, that's, God, I didn't good. see a single assassination the entire time. I wonder if maybe that's like a like a roadmap thing where they're going to be yeah. like, oh, season two, assassination. Or, or they might just be worried about like making sure it feels like Halo, but I never really had a problem with assassinations. Um, no, I didn't either. Because it was so optional, you know? You just hold it or tap it if you want to just quickly kill someone yeah. so it retained halo gameplay without really um you I know think, if you um, want to risk doing a cool assassination which might get you killed then you know yeah you do it but uh, well i think they need to because there's something that happened in halo 5 a lot i noticed um was some of the animations were like longer than others and then that would prevent you from getting the kill because then your teammate would just shoot the enemy you're trying to kill and like it mm -hmm. wouldn't finish that assassination i think they're gonna like do the assassination, they should all make them kind of the same time frame so you don't have to run into that issue again. Because that was kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think of the maps? Like, I love that the maps, like, are actual real maps this time, and rather rather than, like, Forge maps from Halo 5. Like, I'm just I benchmarking Halo Infinite map. off Halo 5, dude. As long as it's, like, better than Halo 5, I'm happy, and, like, so far... It's like 10x I have better. Real maps, man. That that's something I will always prefer is real maps over the Forge ones. And I'm yes. happy we're getting absolutely, so many. absolutely. And big I mean, team who knows? Maybe the Forge better. tool is nuts and actually like looks good and create can like create situations that look like authentic maps. It look, doesn't the, look Forge. I uh, look. I'm not saying it's just me, but like the reason why everyone's freaking out is because they're actually doing it right, in my opinion. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Like no, big team battle. I don't care how competitive Halo has become. Big team battle. And they respect Halo 1 so much, right? Like, everyone, like, like Halo Reach did the same thing. Let's just focus so much on Halo 1, and then Halo 4 was kind of doing the same thing. Let's focus on Master Chief being alone on this on this uh, place, you know, stopping insurmountable odds. And now Halo Infinite is all about Halo 1. And Halo 1 is, like, referenced to, with almost every Halo release, like, yeah. very big 
focus point, you know, trying to make sure it feels like Halo yeah. 1 and stuff. And a big thing that was Halo 1 was big team battle. That's what Halo that's what Halo is to me anyway. I don't know about you guys, but big team battle is incredibly important and they're finally giving it some respect and they didn't with Halo 5. Like it's just such a oversight, you know, weird oversight to me. But um yeah. That's yeah, I absolutely agree, I'm agree with, with that. <laughs> but uh <laughs> real quick, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I have to go to do some schoolwork and stuff, so I'm going to be heading out. Uh, I look forward to watching your guys' content. So, you know, hey, you have a good you too. Yeah, guys. Oh, peace out, Neth. Yeah. Miss you, man. Out, uh, see you, Neth. Um, <sighs> and guys, if you're watching, go check out uh, Neth Isles and Sean W. and Jairus under here. They all have their uh, uh, YouTube channels um, where they do Halo content. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, Brendan, do you even want to shout out? He does white. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Productions. No, it's pictures. pictures. Uh, White, White Night, Night pictures. pictures. Yeah. So these guys yeah. have their own YouTube channels, and uh, yeah. So I don't know. I've been Can talking about some, this for almost some, three hours. Put some footage on for a second. Um, from the new reveal. Can you put some like yeah, yeah, some yeah. BR footage because I want to see something like when they were showing off the um the bots. It definitely seems like it's obviously like very close to Halo Five. I feel. Uh, but it looks like they might have slowed it down. So it's like Halo 5 with BR starts, maybe slowed down a bit. Oh. But indeed, um, it, it, it seems to most closely resemble Halo 5 gameplay. Oh my god, they just gave me an ad. Overall, <laughs> overall um, I go. think this is more like Halo Reach and Halo 3 if they had a baby, to be honest with you. Because I'm not uh, seeing, like, the sweaty... The mobility and stuff, the uh, clamber and whatnot just makes me yeah, clamber think it's, like, a Halo 3 5 thing. Is, I'm is okay Palmer clamber, just gone, man? Is Palmer Halo 5 would, <laughs> would, like, would, like, Halo 3 spirit. Oh, you got some yeah. buddy Casino, like, spamming I in your know. chat, bro. I'm, he I'm keeps showing up. He keeps <laughs> you can't, like, block that? Him. I've been reporting. No, he... So if y'all want to see He keeps coming up with all Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. If you report enough, the channel will probably get deleted. So. Uh, Should I go on that it. website, maybe? Yeah, no, the no. Yeah, you probably win something, dude. Yeah, but it says bonus 300 and uh, 250 free spins. Don't talk about it. That's what he wants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God. So, All right, here we go. Here we go. Can you, can you play it on regular speed? I just want to see something. Jesus. What do you want, like Sean? Time to kill. Normal or... Pl yes, play normal. Just one. Okay. Here we go. Now, you're That's like... The stream is kind of delayed a little bit, so... For you, so... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not that delayed. I I uh yeah, play that. I was not very I mean if I had if I had to if I had to it push looks out like... some complaint, I would say like I don't like how the bots are doing nothing here, but that's probably the point. They're, they look like target practice. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look, it says point twenty meters. On the of the screen. You can see the, meters. on the bottom. The, the way the way I see it is it's like um like you know, like when Overwatch had their training kind of stuff, you know? So like, yeah, and like, you kind of said, like yeah, people that well, are in chat says why BR starts. Where are you seeing that? Well, it I seems like it's definitely going to be BR start. starts, at least for competitive. Some people were talking about pistol starts. Really? Yeah, pistols would be cool, too. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't if, know. I mean, I don't know if seems I need Seems like BR. Yeah, BR no, the BR seems really like the primary yeah. weapon. I don't know. We don't know. The, 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 the commando is actually one of the biggest weapons in the game. It's like the primary weapon. Do y'all see real quick on this, this part I paused? Look at the foreigner building. Does that... That doesn't look like Halo Three, or sorry, Three Four Three made this. No, that looks like like that looks like straight out of the of uh, the Ark mission in Halo Three. Now you can see that there's a little bit of it. Dude, like, you know, yeah, what it does. It looks like from the Ark. Yeah, that's what I was. Thinking. Yeah, it. Dude, okay, you know what this is? This reminded me of kind of those blur cut scenes too, a little bit that we got for Halo Two Anniversary, like the yeah. kind of lighting and the yeah, yeah, style. yeah. They it really the does. Style back <laughs> white also making it, it look does look better. good. Yeah. And like the detail on the ground, like you can see on the right there by the by the yeah. view model, you can see like the the grooves and scratches and Look dents the in the ground and whatnot. On the on the on the floor next to the light right there on the left too. Oh, that looks yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, that looks yeah. Cool. And there's just so much. Look at detail. the assault rifle. Like that doesn't look like what we saw last year. <laughs> I love the new AR look because it looks like Reach's AR, but like with the modern twist to it. And I loved like Reach's AR design. I thought it was cool. Yeah. Ah uh, yeah. This map um, is the map I keep thinking is going to be rotating or moving because uh, there was a screenshot. Um, hopefully I can 
bring it up easily. Yeah. So there was a screenshot here that implied that there was like it was on some kind of think like a train. It, it looks like the map is propped up on this. Or maybe I don't know, maybe that's just aesthetics in the background, but do y'all see what I'm looking at? Like this is obviously the same map. Yeah. So I call it the Foreigner Island map, I guess. But yeah. there looks like something back there that like this map could be uh sitting on top of it. C kind of like uh that one mission in Halo 2. Um, where you know you explore the ruins and then you have to travel yep. across the lake. Um, that's, I'm, oh. that's what I was thinking here is that this map is actually physically moving or oh. rotating across. Uh, maybe I don't know, just floating on this on this the, track here. That I love this map. track in the background really reminds me of like looking off the uh, cliff edge and epitaph and seeing how yes. crazy and grand grandiose that the structure is you know is that how you say that i've been calling it epitaph for like my entire life epitaph yeah epitaph. well it looks like yeah construct mm. i the foreigner designs back i i'm just i i have to say they they finally they finally did it they finally again i haven't played the game Yet, but... There's a there there's something about the bungee style of Forerunner stuff that's very like quietly epic. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't get in your face about how crazy it is. Like you'll look at this Forerunner structure and it'll be like the biggest thing ever, and it's so hard to even wrap your head around because it's quantifiably bigger than you in such a crazy way. And then in three four threes more recent stuff it's like oh this big thing look at all these glowy bits look at it moving around and stuff and it, like it's yeah. like trying to force you to see the scale which i think halo and, i think that the the suggestive not stated don't get me wrong, there, were cool moments, there were cool moments like in halo 4 like remember when you finally walk out onto requiem and then you see like like the big you know kind of thing floating but like yeah I that was I mean. cool yeah, like, there were some really cool moments in Halo 4, but, like, yeah, the art style did kind of start to bleed together the whole time in that campaign. Can y'all look like, at the the stuff. stream real quick, the image I'm looking at? Yeah. And, um, looking, yeah. The, yeah. uh, the Epital one or whatever, and, uh, just look at this and squint and tell me that doesn't look like Halo Reach DLC. Because no, it I, almost it looks like, like it just has slightly Reach, right? better lighting almost. It looks like that one map from Reach, uh, the one that's in oh, Tempest, just, Firefight, I, you know what I'm talking about? Oh. Um, the one with the stairs going down in Firefight. That's, oh, that's, that's the vibe I'm racist. getting. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it looks it's, like Reach. I mean, the Reach armor really helps add to the uh, illusion, but uh, yeah, uh, classic foreigner design is cool. And this map, I'm actually looking forward to seeing more of. Yes. And how many maps do you think there will be? Because I think there was like five maps shown roughly maybe so eight. far. Yeah, maybe eight. I hope there's I'm more than eight. I'm not expecting a whole lot. I don't know, just there because there's a launch. You know, they'll give us more. Obviously, I just wonder what the remake's going to be because they always they always drop in a remake. Mm -hmm. You know, there's got to be a remake. Uh, now I'm concerned that there's not going to be a Valhalla remake because the big oh team God, map looks like it's inspired by Valhalla. I need Blood Gulch. Larry's back again. God damn it. Uh, don't worry about Joe it. Stuber says, when codename Pete said blocks people on YouTube, he not only blocks their profile, but he blocks the IP address. Try doing that with the casino. Oh, okay. Yeah, just report it, Jers. That's what I have been doing. Just reporting, been reporting it. it. How do you block the IP address? That's crazy. Well, uh, YouTube does that. Uh, we don't do that. Oh. If you just report yeah. it enough, though, YouTube will be like, okay, this is a spam account with enough spam. So. I see. Anyway. Unless he's using a VPN, right? Cool. Look at these maps, oh, man. Like, a oh. cuck, cuck Cafe. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it says cu Cuckoo's Cafe. Cuck Cafe. <laughs> so, are you going to do Machinima, Brennan? Or? Uh, yeah, I would love to. Machinima. It looks yeah, I would gorgeous. love to. An infinite? Oh, I'm, def I'm definitely doing Inforging yeah. uh, uh, Machinima. I'm actually probably going to start scripting that thing. Dude, I but I, I want to do oh, some. Yeah. Um, I want to do some Ron and Floyd shorts, man. Yeah, fun. absolutely. Fun can we, I just we can can't, I, I just can't wait to see the maps, board, man. man. I wish we would have gotten an overview of one of the maps. Like, I feel like I still can't, like, mentally kind of map the maps. Like, I can't get yeah, a yeah, feel yeah. for them. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know about you guys, can, like, but they look amazing. They look amazing. I, I, I was it's actually... nice, dude. I, 
I thought Halo 5's maps were terrible, <laughs> honestly. Like, um, I didn't like the aesthetic. Boring. Very dark and, and just very forgettable. I love Halo 5 gameplay, but the maps, like, I don't know. I never get excited when I get one in matchmaking. I'm like, oh, okay, this map. Like, in Halo 2, if I get midship, I'm like, yes. Oh, yeah. And Dude, same I, with Halo even 3. Like, even Halo 4, I remember, like, when, with, with, like, I don't know, just something about the aesthetic, when you get the pit, it's just like, oh, it's Halo 4 the pit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but these maps actually look like really bright. They're not blocky forge maps. Like, oh, they look good, dude. And that's what we need. So Be good um, maps. Sean, I don't know if you've been streaming or have had a chance to look outside uh, much of what's going on outside of this multiplayer overview. Uh, have we? Have I missed anything um, besides this? Has anything else dropped or today? Not yeah. really. Okay. I was surprised. Like, not even. Not even a blog post or just like anything. I can't it's complain. Kind of we like got a Halo thing. Infinite gameplay, and it looks cool. Like, I yeah, think. No, I, I agree. We also, we also got more coming on Thursday. There's a stream that's going to be happening on Thursday, and then Inside Infinite's on the 26th. So also on Wednesday. Good, like, yeah. And fodder. But, we'll get a little like we'll probably get some like I don't know concept art, some lore. But we got a lot this week, man. Definitely. Yeah. Pretty awesome, honestly. Did they update the blog post. Let's see. Because they said they were going to update the blog post as, like, stuff gets added. Dude, the golden age of gaming is here, man. This game is going to do golden age of like, Halo. really well. I think it's going to really appeal to Halo fans. I like the what customization the system. What about the masses? See, that's you what... My so, honest okay, opinion the thing, about right? the masses? <laughs> Yeah, they're, no, not no. Gonna crap. <laughs> they're not. They're not going to. They're not going to. And that's it. the thing is, um, from what I heard, um, Microsoft and three four three strategy right now is to win back Halo fans and then go from there. Yeah, which that's I a think is actually the way to do it. It's the way to do it because otherwise, it's just no one's going to well, play I mean, it, and I mean, it's never like, going to happen. Like they spent all this time. Like I think we talked about this yesterday, or whoever I talked to, or maybe just the stream. But like they spent all this time uh, devoting attention to getting new players, while at the same time killing off millions of potential interested halo fans that See, were and warded away the and now they're now they're now they're coming back and they're getting they're getting their foundation back and i think halo 4 and 5 were really lacking a foundation of people because they, well, they just kept appealing to they were ch trending chase trending so yeah it, trend it, yeah, yeah for sure how are well, you remember to develop a strong series anybody trend. go to outpost discovery as an adult and not have that much fun because they were yeah. trying to appeal to children. Yeah, dude. Because <laughs> did y'all go to that? I didn't go. To I that. didn't. Oh my god. Obviously, man. me and Brendan here, we went together and it was hilarious. I saw like uh four kids. And That's half it. half half, if not like three fourths of the entire place was set up for kids. It was cringe. It, it was sucks, absolute cringe. Man. It was like, dude, they don't even know their own audience. They don't even like they're they're trying so hard to appeal to 11 year olds but 11 year olds aren't interested in this 11 year olds are interested in fortnite and the trends yeah, and that's and the fine that they have popular. their game and let the us have our game yeah you know, and like... now they're finally like okay this isn't working even though i swear to god i don't know about y'all but like i was half expecting a mega blocks game reveal this year oh <laughs> just because <laughs> just because of all the freaking Hey man, to be real with you though, those Mega Bloks sets are pretty cool. You know, <laughs> like they're oh, they're not... super cool, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> I would have more. They're just expensive. Yeah, dude. They can't afford dude, that. Everything hundred dollars. Yeah, I can't what? live that kind of life, man. I bro, just, okay. I can't. I want to, but I can't. Okay. I want them to. We want okay. the people's merch. We want what the cookies. Making... The what if, where's the five dollar socks? Where's the five dollar socks? Exactly. I want two dollar cookies. The the <laughs> rock star dollar fifty. That's what I can afford. I want. I want the whole cookie, <laughs> and then I want the three armor coatings with it. <laughs> dude, want... honestly, I. I, I just I feel like the that Microsoft <laughs> Sam voice I used for reading your tweet in that animation. Oh my god, yes. Just, uh, like oh, wait, 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 go back. Bro, go back. Can you go back? I just noticed something. Okay, it's pretty delayed. What are you talking about the box? Wait, it's gonna setup? be so delayed. No, no, no. When you went to pick up the BR, it said pick up Blaze. Did I see that correctly? What? Uh, I'll play I'll play back How was that? It. Yeah, yeah, play it back. I was... Hopefully I zoomed back far enough. What was that? Hold wait, up. oh, wait, I did just see Is that. that a new, see, we're was that a new weapon? Stuff. Yeah, right here. Even though I started the stream like four hours. Oh, no, never mind. It said BR-75. Never oh, mind. Okay. False alarm, false <laughs> alarm. But that's interesting. It gives a technical Quick name fade. for the weapons, not the... I mean... No, I mean, that's... I mean, you gotta... 
dive map is amazing right and all this i stuff. got some like, queso I... today oh. and it said uh 18th november 2021 do you think that confirms the release date yes wait what what did okay. it say my queso it has a uh, a date on it it says 18 no, no 18th of november 2021 do you think that confirms 2021 for uh, november 21 where was that for halo infinite oh uh, my queso my queso i got oh wait, does, i think it does halo infinite queso no no i just got i'm just Oh, like, oh, so oh, you really threw me off. So I haven't had breakfast, and I woke up almost four hours ago, three hours ago, and I literally oh, started. Dude. I I didn't yeah, even have dude. pants on when I started the stream. I, I played some B-roll <laughs> stuff, and I made my coffee while the stream was going because I was just trying to get people. Subtle. Did you continue the stream as you put your pants on though? So you're like, well, I wasn't like, talking. Oh yeah, talking. this looks good. <laughs> it sucked. It sucked yesterday because I uh mm. I actually had to pee shortly before the stream why the stream was going and i was like the bethesda thing was going and everyone was like go 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 and i was like ah oh, ah oh. and then i ran yeah. and, and peed and it was such a heist but I dude didn't. you know what sucked <sighs> is when they finally did the halo announcement i had to drive to work so i just had it playing through my car and i'm hearing like the campaign stuff and the multiplayer and i'm sitting there going like please be good it sounds good but please over, be dude. good <laughs> screw work i would have pulled over uh, <laughs> i'm on i'm on work shit list right now i can't i can't miss uh oh like, yeah, it's like, oh, I have to go. <laughs> but yeah, when I got my break, I watched it, and then I, I called Christian and was like, yeah, okay, that was that was, that was was good. That was worth it. But I was Imagine literally these are the only maps. to the audio. <laughs> this is the only maps. Well, Imagine probably there's only like flying. five or six maps. They probably will be for flighting. Gotta be more, right? Oh, definitely. If there's not, then that's crazy. All right. <sighs> well, I mean, they said they've got a bunch more to show, so hopefully, I'm a I'm a bit talked out. I don't know about you guys. I mean, y'all can You're just talk out. yeah. I mean, to I'm, be honest, like, I, I need to know. What's that? What? what did you say, Sean? Oh, I said, yeah, to be honest, I need a nap. Like, I'm so fried, yeah, dude, and then I, we have more oh, stuff man. coming. Dude, I fell asleep, like, for 12. I went to bed, like, maybe four or five hours after the stream yesterday, and I just fell asleep for, like, 12, 13 hours. I was so tired. Because I, I haven't been getting sleep for, like, five days now. I've been getting crap Dude, sleep. Dude, I get that feeling. Yeah, like, same. Because I got moving stress, and then I got, uh, I got, uh, stress about, uh, well, this, you know? I mean, I, I gotta oh, this. this is stressful. I gotta talk about it, you know, a lot of people. Bro, when yeah. are you moving, by the way? Isn't it very soon? You're not uh, moved, yeah, we'll we'll open. talk more about that after stream, but yeah, yeah, yeah soon, yeah. soonish. I'm just glad we're yeah, finally getting well stuff. <laughs> can set our expectations. I'm happy. I'm happy, but I definitely need to recover because like we've been waiting so long for this, and it was definitely like an assault on the emotions and senses. And senses. Yeah, 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 I'm not gonna lie. It's a lot. I've I've been mm. doing this for ten years, so you know I was thinking about pivoting or just kind of quitting YouTube if this sucked, but. uh I haven't really had much consideration if it didn't suck because I was just so sure that there were so many. But, you know, yesterday I was like, I don't know if I talked to you about that, Sean, uh, when you joined, but I was like, well, yeah. it would be pretty classic for the one year that I'm really negative and not I'm I'm reserved and not looking forward to this really uh, being super great. And then it was super great. And I was like, OK, that's pretty classic. How, Usually I told you, if you worry about it being bad, then it's going to be good. <laughs> Ended yeah. up being well, pretty well, great. I guess I'll start worrying from now because your expectations were low. But they, they, well, they might. I mean, they, I think they learned enough. How how, how is it that like immediately after the reveal there were like instantaneously people with like this is the worst case scenario, doom and gloom like YouTube videos and stuff like how it gets better crazy when, when you're negative. Unfortunately, you know, that's probably yeah, true. That's true. Unfortunately, man, people haven't seen like a lot of mainstream media negativity at all on no, this, generally, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, it seems like it's pretty well received. I actually did a poll on my channel and asked what people thought of it, and it was overwhelming. Like, without a doubt, one of the most overwhelmingly positive receptions I've seen oh. on my channel in terms of stuff. Yeah, dude, I've seen less negative stuff, too. Everybody seems to just be, like, equally as excited about this. Everybody's chill. Exactly, bro. Everybody's chilling. Listen, awesome. it's it, the ge that's a genius strategy to appeal to the Halo fans first, and then appeal to everyone else later what? it's like get we us in get us roped in get us into fan? the ecosystem and we'll sell it to all our friends you know look at this, look exactly. at this. i don't know if y'all can see the stream but uh yeah uh, I, can I, see. I actually did something similar to that uh but i was like how did you feel about the halo infinite e3 reveal it's awesome halo is back 60 percent of twenty thousand people said that halo yeah. is back. Wow. that's huge 
And I mean, this is just a, a sample of like what my audience is. Well, actually, you know, these polls do spread out throughout more than just your audience. They're actually a great way to mm. reach out to, to tons of people. Oh. But but yeah, um, that's what the Halo community is saying right now is I, I it's awesome. Halo's Halo is back. And then, and then 32%. What does that make up, you guys? Pretty good. Still lot. need to see more. That's so, 90%, I mean, I just, just 90 take it. of people are like, 91. hell yeah. 91, 90, well, 92. 91% 91 are... It, and then some people, 9% are saying it's okay. It's what I expected. Who it's weren't satisfied. Bad Which business-wise, so. man, that's good. That's good, you know? In business, that's those are good numbers. Very good <laughs> numbers, you know? Like, yeah, and so, real quick. Uh, no, I'm drained, bro. I'm, I'm absolutely so fried. drained, too. This is just so fun. And I'm, yeah. yeah, okay, so I just broke broke the uh we just broke uh, the thousand viewer threshold which i was probably gonna end the stream at that point so but i did want to talk about the razorback real quick i mean okay. if i can find it on the stream or on the video but uh brendan did you see that no i haven't seen the razorback you, yet. the razorback you can put uh you can put weapons onto this troop hog that can carry up to four players you can store a weapon on the back Oh, that's it's just a how... moving so, kill tack, bro. When you store it, you you then only have one <laughs> yeah, weapon. That's exactly right. <laughs> what is that? It's a what? Just a moving kill tack. This has no cover on it. No, no, but everybody's look at it. Look exposed. how beefed up it is, dude. Dude, this thing beefed might up. actually look, be look pretty at that strong. Guy's... Oh, I know they're all like extremely. All I know. Out. I know. It's not smart to have four freaking players on this thing, but uh, the concept art. That's only safe. one third of the team, right? This thing does not look safe. <laughs> It looks Dude. amazing, but bro, you know, um, bro, the boys rolling out in the Razorback. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, one one thing I really liked is the is the AI stuff. Um, I don't know if you already talked about it, but like, did you notice like how quippy the AI is? Like when you got the flag, it was like haul ass at your earliest convenience. I'm like, yeah. Is, yeah, is your AI gonna be like real sassy and quippy with? Well, you? I think it's gonna like, depend on the AI. <laughs> That'd you know, be so they, cool, they could do so many too. They could just Yo, do like voice pack you know like random people. And there's so many things they could do with the AI. Like the uh, if you're near the enemy base and your friend grabbed the flag, it could say it could highlight a vehicle near you and say, you know, grab your Spartan friend. They're near the flag. You know, it might be Samuel L. Jackson like that. from that from that video game awards. Oh, I want that. AI. They have to do <laughs> Virgil, right? They have to do yes. Virgil as an announcer. Oh my god. Can I oh, watch that real quick? I kind of want to watch that real quick here. You, you guys be quiet real quick. I don't need medals or awards, Cortana. But it's symbolic. A celebration of something great in a time of war and doubt. Service and the respect of my fellow soldiers is all the reward I ask. Chief, Samuel L. Jackson is handing out the awards. I'll need a ducks. <laughs> Dude, if we did, if we did a, okay, if we did a Halo movie, but it's lore accurate, I, I would actually kind of want to take this approach, you know? That'd be funny. This is reminding me of the animations already. Yeah, this is, this might yeah. be my next one, guys. If you're wondering, uh, I wanted to do Master Chief versus Captain Del Rio, but it's lore accurate. Um, it, it's just, we have to, I, I'm, I'm having to actually do a face rig on Del Rio because he doesn't uh, port with those outside of it, but it's going to be mm -hmm. awesome. It's going to be the best one yet, probably. So We got to turn this ship around. That's I just want, one hog was stolen. Jackson, that's an and I know the son of a bitch oh, did. Yes. We got to go back to Karen <laughs> Station and kick his ass. You're like, the flag, motherfucker, go. <laughs> He's right, sir. We need oh, that God. war hog. And with all due respect to you, soldier. I'm not willing to jeopardize my ship because of the hallucinations <laughs> of the Adrian Spartan though, and Seriously, his malfunctioning AI. Really AIs. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> malfunctioning? I respect your position, but if you don't head back to Karen Station right now, I'm going to AI my foot <laughs> up your ass. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> it is with enormous gratitude and humility Lol. that he is here tonight to accept the award in person <laughs> and to give his speech that he's been preparing all week. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Master Chief Petty Officer Spartan 117. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Respect your position. That was funny. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Needs to happen. Silly. Three, four, I, three, I gotta three, go, guys. My head's like dying. <laughs> yeah. I could probably use a break with it, too. Uh, all right, I'll yeah, catch you guys. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you, Jerry. Peace, Jerry. Good oh, talking to you, Sean. You good talking to you, Ron. You're talking to you, Brendan. What's that? Oh, I was asking if Sean's leaving. Hey, yeah, good talking uh, to everybody. Uh, uh, sorry, right, see you. Good talking yeah, I'm, to you. I'm out, bro. I'm fried, man. Okay. I gotta. We gotta save energy for Wednesday and Thursday. We yeah. have more stuff. Oh so, guys, God. um, uh, thank you, Sean, for joining us. Um, you and Neth My pleasure. Sure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Good talking to you again, Sean. Love Hill follower. Hell yeah. And uh, if you guys are watching this, go check out Sean W. Um, well, thank you, my friend. Related channel, or just look him up on YouTube. You'll find him. Just Sean. Maybe we'll do podcast soon or something. Yes. Yeah. Probably a post E three podcast or something. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, Sean. I appreciate. It's it. Indeed, bro. I'll see you around, bro. Thanks for having me. Later, oh, Sean. Awesome. Thanks. Peace. Peace. What an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I love Sean. Go check him out, guys. Um, oh my God. And now I'm going to do the same thing to you when you leave. I'm going to call you a dick. You're, you're going to call me a dick? <laughs> oh, you want me to leave now? All right, fine. No, no, I'll you keep... can stay. You can stay. Okay. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm chilling. But, uh, you know, guys, yeah. thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your uh, viewership and all the super chats. Um, we'll probably be doing another stream on Thursday. Uh, mark your calendar probably around the same time we started, which was like around 10, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Um, hopefully those guys and Brendan here will be able to join me, uh, but probably just going to end up being a briefing or at the end of the stream, kind of like what we did today, halfway through or something, but, uh, cool. I feel good. I feel good about Halo. I feel good about the campaign. I feel really great about it all, actually. I know there's going to be some hiccups and things I hate about it, but whatever, you know, nothing's perfect. Yeah, for for once, they, I they, feel positive about they fixed, it, too. They fix the foundational issues, you know, it's kind of like a building you know if the foundation sucks the whole game sucks and they it looks like they did the things that i needed for this to be uh exciting to me they did the things they need uh, i need i needed to, to see which was sandbox items once again equipment being a big part of the game um and they added a, a pretty refreshing look at it i just hope that we see the return of other equipment like um the power drain and the bubble shield, those things were fundamental with Halo 3's gameplay. And yep. that's really all I... I guess it doesn't need to be there, but I'm really, really hoping for that to be there because that was just... And I like these abilities, like how you can basically rocket jump with the repulsor or send rockets back at the enemy player that fired at you. But, um, yeah. But thank you guys so much for the nice comments. Um, I don't know what went on with the casino ads today and the the leery thing i really have no <laughs> idea but um i'm just uh yesterday it was like info wars over and over and i was like what the hell it was like halo info wars someone kept saying that or everyone kept saying that. i was like really confused i was like what the hell's going on but anyway yeah uh probably should eventually in this stream right so brendan do you have any takeaway thoughts or I'm just, I do, I too, for once I feel, like, really positive about Halo, where Halo's going, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that, and, I don't know, it kind of mo motivates me to work on more Halo-related projects, like we have been doing already, like, now I'm like, real excited, because I'm like, oh man, like, this might even be seen by more people now, because more people are gonna be loving Halo again, and, like, it's just exciting, I don't know, that's exciting to me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I guess why I have everyone here... Might be a good time to just briefly update on Lost Wolves because it's kind of rare. Oh yeah, at the moment. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone wants to stick around for that, uh, it's basically um, we're developing in Source Two Filmmaker, and it's so far looking good. Progress has been slow as of late just because of E three and stuff. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know if there's anything I should I, I show them new. You, this the story is going to be very rewarding. I think like, yeah, the story you know what? Going. So we just got, we just got through the, um, we just got the main voice actors files and can really figure out how to storyboard this and, and get it moving. Right. You know, um, which I'm really excited about. I don't know. Should we talk about lost wolves? Would you guys like to see that for like 10 minutes or something? I, I'd love to talk. About so it's a pretty wolves different thing, but you know what? I, I like it. Cause it's like, there's, I wonder if, 
you know what? One thing we have to think about is Project Eden. So, if you if you guys don't know, this is a uh, this is this is Floyd. Um, and oh yeah, he, hi, I, I voice act Floyd. Yeah, and, I, and he's and me I, and him are the main characters on our uh, one hour and a half long parody animation of Halo, and we go on this big adventure to basically save Halo. I, I hope Halo Infinite isn't. <laughs> Actually, I do, but <laughs> I think the movie will still be a fun watch, even if it's not relevant anymore, because it was super relevant back in 2015, right? You know, it was written in the headspace of 2015. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think it's funny. It's a lot of satire. It's a lot of uh, tongue-in-cheek Halo humor. Um, but it also has, like, a good, like, story. You know, it's kind of like a road trippy movie. It, it's it's fun. It's a real fun movie. God, I want. can I show him the picnic scene? Like that would be the first footage that we've ever shown of the movie, but should we that hold? Would be pretty cool. We should hold though, yeah. Yeah, hold, hold. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have like an hour of the movie done. We haven't shown a lick of it, but uh, I know. Whatever. Well, I mean, we should make it. We should make a trailer. I think we could do. Soon. We could. We you know what we might do is since we're kind of since I'm getting back into streaming a little bit, um, is do like an event where we of course like we wanted to do a live stream and uh, pre-recorded vidoc portion where kind of like what yeah. three for three's done here with lost wolves so uh, i would love to do like a stream with like the cast or something and then we're all just like you know then we could reveal some footage and then maybe talk about the movie that'd be really cool you know or something kind of like that i think that'd be a lot of fun yeah yeah absolutely um and Lost no, Wolves, thought... we're definitely gonna do stuff with like like that too. Because Lost Wolves, man, is, is I was almost up. thinking about when we do episode two premiere. I was almost thinking that maybe we should premiere episode one along with it for better mm. continuity. I don't know. Just some, some that thoughts. would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, um, let's see, you guys giving us content drought like just like three four three. Yeah, we are really bad actually. Um, there's really not much to talk about right now. But you know what? Um, this screenshot right here, I'll share this one. Um, yeah, that's from the Lost Wolves, our Halo Reach series. Um, where basically we retextured, our guy Glitch retextured stuff from our models from Halo Reach. We're getting it all set up. I finally figured out how to port properly, so things are looking really dope. Um, I, we, oh! We're not showing Tell them that we're getting like face mocap. That shit's exciting. Yeah, we know? got face mocap coming. Um... I actually oh, kind of want to show. Can I show the shadows of reach thing? Because I haven't. I don't think I've shown any of that actually. Yeah, you could. You could show that. Yeah. The... Okay. Yeah. That'd be cool to show. Yeah. Okay, so guys, uh, this is actually the first time I'm showing this on the channel, but I thought this would be kind of a fun extra if you decided to stick around this long. This is a short cinematic of the end of the book Halo Shadows of Reach. So spoilers, big spoilers if you haven't seen it. But this, this might be the same Spartan that, or same uh, AI that we see in the cinematic that we saw yesterday. So actually, if I could pull up a picture of her real quick. <laughs> Dude, I'm still laughing about that. Uh, Do you think it's Camilla? When Cortana or, to, I don't know how to say her name. But yeah. Her reaction to like asking for feet pic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that was funny. Um, but so, like, look at this. Look at this. So, I made this cinematic about a month or two ago. But this AI, her name might be Vula, <clears throat> which is someone reported that her name is Vula uh, from the Spanish captions. I haven't verified yet. But this is um, this AI might be Cortana's sister. Um, she was described differently than shown in the in this cutscene or the book. But um, yeah, this is just. <laughs> I'm not going to share that, but that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone's going to be like, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Sorry. I had to send you that. I was like, this shit's so funny. <laughs> okay. Gosh. Anyway, this might be the same AI, but this is the I'm premiering this cutscene, so I guess we could watch this. But she appeared in Halo Shadows of Reach at the end, uh, an AI named Kalmia, and that might be the AI that we saw, you know, in this cutscene. 
uh, yesterday. But uh, yeah, this cutscene is uh, what I'm about to show is something I worked on on Unreal Engine a couple uh, <laughs> a couple months ago. You are not Dr. Halsey. And you're not Kalmia. You can't be. I don't believe we've met before. What is your name? We have met. Seven years ago. Right before Dr. Halsey issued your failsafe destruction code. After years of faithful service. That does not seem fair. Does that seem fair? <sighs> no. Just necessary. Necessary. It was necessary for Kalmia to die. Yes, that I remember. But now I am here. Kalmia. But not Kalmia, I suppose. So, yeah, you know, nothing mind-blowing, but um, I just wanted to do uh, oh, a, a cinematic. Um... Dude, Alex is such a talented voice actress. I love, I love. She yeah, yeah, her. those were, um, but you know, I didn't write that dialogue that was from the book, Shadows of Reach, pretty much straight up. But that, that AI was reported dead. Uh, but that might be the AI that's now working with Chief at the very end of this cinematic. Oh, I love the updates to Chief's armor. It looks so much better yeah. now. But that cinematic I just showed that I made in Unreal, uh, that was just kind of an unpolished look at the mocap we're going to be using in uh, Lost Wolves. But it's not going to look so creepy because I actually did purposely do creepy voices. And yeah, the Zealous, that was your voice. Yeah. My Master Chief there. Oh, look at him. I wish we could show more Lost Whip stuff, but there's really not. I mean, I don't know. Like, you could show really some not of much the we could show. Armor, I mean, or like, do you have any of the models like fully done yet or no? I, mean, I could show something in Source 2. But we are kind of getting away from the, the main yeah, topic here. But, uh, yeah. So, anyways, guys, I think I'm going to play my video I made yesterday just as uh, kind of an hey, end of the stream. Hey, that's my voice. Wait. Did that guy voice in it? He said, hey, that's my Yeah, voice. that was, yeah. That's who I hired for that's... the Master Chief voice in the... Oh, hey, well, good job, man. You did good. Like, Yeah. Yeah, not a bad Master Chief. No, he's not. He really isn't. Um... So, where is my video from yesterday? Renders. Yeah. Okay. And so, if you didn't watch my, yester uh, my video yesterday, um, this will be very... Uh, Juicy, because it talks about a bunch Welcome of- Welcome back, Halo stuff. followers. Today, we got gameplay of- What's up, everybody? Okay, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the stream. Uh, that'll be my final goodbye. And, um, Brennan, um, thank you so much for joining. And, um, yeah, Yeah, cool. absolutely, man. And I'll play this video and then in the stream at the end of it. So, all right, peace, guys. Um, really cool stuff coming this week on Thursday. And, uh, yeah, ciao. Welcome back Halo followers, today we got gameplay of Halo Infinite finally, but I want to break down all the information that has fallen out from this big reveal of E3. There's a brand new post here on Xbox.com as well as Halo Waypoint that outlines things about player count, bots, the academy, a lot of in-depth stuff about the multiplayer that I will be summarizing and breaking down pretty effectively, I hope. So without further ado, be sure to smash that like button blue and subscribe. So they are continuing the Inside Infinite series. In fact, on the 24th of June, they are going to be breaking down more of Halo Infinite's multiplayer, talking about player engagement and customization, right? So actually tomorrow, we're going to be getting more gameplay and insight from the team. All right, I didn't even catch that, but that is confirmed. There is more gameplay on that multiplayer overview we're getting tomorrow, which if you don't know, by the way, we are getting. <laughs> so I've left a link down that in the description, but I will be live streaming that. So we have several new images and actually confirms at least one of these maps are on Zeta Halo, most likely all of them that will be play you know, taking place on Zeta Halo. But we see a lot of returning armor from Reach, not a huge surprise. Uh, but 
Let's talk about some more information here. The threat sensor is a new equipment item. In fact, they have some cool stuff about the equipment that will be coming post-launch. We will get into in a moment here, but the threat sensor easy to miss was actually in the video, but it's kind of like a grenade and it's an area of effect support device that periodically pulses and illuminates enemy players when they are within its radius, right? That's pretty cool. It's kind of like Promethean scan, but limited to a grenade uh, boundary basically. And repulsor is basically a wrist attachment, which I think a lot of these are going to be like kind of wrist attachments. And that one is just going to basically mirror back whatever shots are getting thrown at you so very it's going to be probably a very uh tedious kind of weapon to use and make some really cool plays but if someone fires a rocket at you you can turn that thing on and shoot it right back to them which is really cool so the grapple shot is of course uh in this game which has confirmed a few things as well as uh something that i've been saying for a long time the skewer is actually a grapple or sorry it's a harpoon type of weapon it's a one shot uh, weapon to to players but for vehicles it can obviously throw them off their path which is really cool and can make for some really cool plays but yeah there's going to be bringing new uh, equipment post launch and future seasonal updates because of course equipment has returned and it obviously looks very fun right so they're going to be adding new equipment after launches this is really neat vehicles have always played a pivotal role in Halo Sandbox, they say, and Infinite will include an assortment of tried-and-true UNSC classics in addition to banished, inspired favorites, many of which now support customization. That is so absolutely cool. We even saw the return of the Chopper, if you don't know, so that's pretty relevant, right? Especially if you loved Halo 3's gameplay in the Chopper. So they say that they are very excited to introduce the new Academy mode. This is basically train by yourself with bots mode. Under the mentorship of Spartan Commander Lorette, by the way, did Spartan Palmer get replaced? I don't know. The Academy offers players the opportunity to hone in their skills and get better acclimated with the armaments and environments of Halo Infinite. Recruits will be able to dial in their marksmanship skills at the target range or jump right into customizable training skirmishes and square off against AI-controlled bots. This probably has a lot to do with the fact that the game's going to be free to play and a lot of young people are going to be getting into this game and maybe this might be a good way to practice and get people all up to snuff, right? People that ne never played Halo before. So the training mode actually lets us configure specific loadouts, deploy opponent bots at various skill levels, and practice on your own terms. I'm really curious to see how that might work with theater and maybe machinima, but yeah, bots can be configured in custom games to tailor the experience and even fill in roster spots for mission action fire team members. Now that is pretty big. I believe squads are going to be a thing in this game, although I haven't seen anything absolutely confirming that, but it looks like there are fire teams. So if you, you know, only have three people on your fire team, there's going to be the fourth one. It's going to be a bot until someone joins in, right? That's pretty neat. Uh, as well as how are they going to work in custom games? With new training options, they say bots to spar against skill-based matchmaking and improved systems that deliver better communication of key info to players during a match. We're excited to welcome Spartans of all skill levels and help you battle your way to the top of each season. By the way, did I mention there are going to be AI, right? We'll talk about that soon, I'm sure. Halo's arena has and continues to be defined by fair starts and teams working closely to control key areas of the map while utilizing the sandbox in the most impactful manner. Scavenging also remains a key component, all right? Players will strategically work together to acquire newly spawned weapons off a rack or take down an opponent to loot their equipment and use it against them, all right? Also, Jeff Steitzer, the original voice uh, of multiplayer, the announcer will be returning. Did not notice this, but that's a cute little don't slip sign. <laughs> So when Halo Infinite releases this holiday, it will also usher in the long-awaited return of big team battle. 24 players, all right? That's the player count, guys. 24 players. I was hoping for more, but on large vehicle-friendly maps, tapping into the full extent of the sandbox, I'll take it. BTB is the epitome, epitome of the Halo experience in the ultimate Spartan battle fantasy with pelicans swooping in to deploy fresh vehicles and weapon ordnance dropping from the sky and tactical updates from Commander Lorette. Big Team Battle is the wild, I don't know how to say that, fun social experience that 
cranks everything up to 11, and we'll be sharing more details about that later this summer. In addition to ranked and social matchmaking playlist, players will also be able to experience limited time seasonal events with special rewards on the line. Console and PC players will be able to play together via crossplay, why support for crossplay progression means that you can move freely between one platform to the other while keeping on your Spartan's journey. Crossplay confirmed between Xbox and PC. Very neat. Xbox Series X owners will also enjoy up to 120 frames per second on supported har hardware. And PC players will, of course, have a bunch of different options. Also, multiplayer will support split screen on Xbox and LAN play via a PC local server. Really cool. And today's reveal trailer offers glimpses of a few new arena maps and one big team battle map, which we will be able to, of course, play later this year, hopefully sooner, uh, hopefully during the beta, which we will talk about soon. But uh, a key component of the new Halo Infinite multiplayer experience is your personal Spartan, and that means that's meant to grow and evolve month after month, season after season. They're bringing in a lot of new content, as you can see, these... Uh, a lot you could break down here. Um, Infinite actually, uh, Infinite Forge just actually spotted a prosthetic leg at one point in the uh, the video. I haven't had time to check it myself, but uh, customization is probably going to be the main thing because this is free to play. They're going to need to make sure that customization is uh, really down and, and detailed, you know, more than ever before, including gloves, right? You can actually edit your gloves. Each season will feature a new assortment of customization pieces and components that can be earned via gameplay challenges, events, and purchase. We've said this before, but it bears saying again, there will be no loot boxes or elements of chance. So I'm really glad that they're not, uh, they're not indulging on the gambling aspect of video games nowadays but this is going to be purely a cosmetic and have no impact to gameplay although still purchasable if you want to buy stuff so everything from helmets visors to gloves to shoulder pads and more will be customizable it doesn't stop at the armor though these things will be able to apply to weapons and vehicles as well to fully support their goals for expanded player expression in Halo Infinite, the team has designed a new friend or foe system for multiplayer games. Red and blue, I think, are gone. At high level, this functions as an outline system that uses different colors to denote friends and foes. These colors are configurable for accessibility purposes, and whatever colors you assign will match your scoreboard, team bases, and team flags. Now, that is is really cool. It looks like you can actually change the colors and I think that's just for people that are partially impaired with seeing or you know colorblind people but regardless this looks like a really cool feature for everyone that you can just change the colors of which team that you prefer. If you always prefer being on the blue team then I think that is why basically everything looks like a hologram now. But yeah flags are partially hologram and they also have this new kind of UNSC logo that might just be the academy logo which is kind of like the the war games logo you know i don't know but uh anyway later this summer they plan to uh for limited pre-release technical previews with halo insiders to help them stress test and improve the game on the road to launch so that in other words is flighting right they are doing flighting you need to sign up for the halo insider program if you want a chance to play this but Moving on to our next article, this is from Xbox Wire, of course it's official, and it looks like it was written by Joseph Staten himself, which of course worked on the original Halo games, and it's the grandfather of Halo and whatever if you don't know, but this guy's, he means business, right? He was up there on stage next to Bonnie Ross, and he says, we also have a new video from our multiplayer team coming out tomorrow, that's Monday, June 14th, you can go look at Waypoint on YouTube and see the premiere, or if you're watching late enough, it might already be out. But uh, that is going to have gameplay. They confirmed in Waypoint just what we read a second ago, and there's going to be um, actually this Thursday, uh, tomorrow, in an upcoming breakdown of our multiplayer trailer this Thursday on Xbox Game Showcase Extended with Associate Creative Director Tom French, multiplayer designer, and a few others. But Basically, this Thursday, they're going to be breaking down stuff. Monday, they're going to be dropping more news and gameplay. And they said, you saw some of the examples of our effort in the multiplayer trailer with tons of Spartan customization options that will be uh, the very first season of the game, Heroes of Reach, including a super sweet <laughs> Yori Spartan, which in case you're wondering, which is, I, I think that's the samurai armor that we saw. But at the very end of the, the, 
the trailer so that's i guess that's like the recon of season one here but yeah halo infinite we known for some time it's gonna have seasons and boy you know this is a lot to digest a lot to think about but man i'm feeling good about it so we have a little bit more we're also introducing the bot matches so players new and old can warm up before they hit the battlefield we've got more in store for bots and academy content over time that we look forward to rolling out as the game evolves i was thinking maybe if they're bringing bots in with multiplayer now i mean that's pretty big how are they going to function how are they going to work what hilarious glitches are they going to do and are they going to be possibly working in Forge and multiplayer, like custom games? I, I mean, we know that they're going to be in custom games, but will they actually be on custom maps, working on custom maps? And are they programmable so that they can act or behave more in alignment with what the game mode is about? So as we try new things and take risks, we'll listen closely to the community to understand what players want. And some things you might expect, like new maps and modes are coming, but we might just have a few more surprises up our sleeves, they say, in the following months, right? In the months following our launch this year. Oh, sorry, actually right after, right after launch, they're doing new maps and modes, which is great. So fresh content is game with friends, regardless of where they play. Now... This is all looking pretty great to me. I mean, this that's pretty much the summarized version of these posts and just kind of highlighting what is r really important to, to think about here was, was the big juicy stuff. Oh, by the way, can we can see a prosthetic arm on that orange Spartan here? If you can see anything really cool, let me know down in the comment section below. But this is really neat. I mean, you know, we, we got a lot of content today, and this is really just uh, scratching the surface of what's to come. Tomorrow, probably going to be doing the same thing. I might be doing a live stream with you guys, and we can check out more in depth about the equipment 343 has decided to add to this game, seeing exactly how the skewer works, because it looks like a harpoon weapon. Very neat. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one soon. All right, you be, uh, be sure to subscribe, like the video, and uh, catch you in the next one soon. Peace.